The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Start your week off right with the V-Day candidates in Toronto, Canada. Sunday is considered a day of rest in many parts of the world, but not for these tireless competitors. Tan Zong Yi must not have enjoyed sharing the lead, rebounding after her first loss with a decisive victory to reclaim clear first in the women's section. Vidit Gujarati made a compelling argument to be in the frontrunner conversation after demolishing number two seed Hikaru Nakamura to remain in contention. The kings and queen of the state are not relinquishing their leads. Will their reigns be cemented or can they be dethroned? Day 10 of Legendary Chess, coming up next. here in a very cool area of Toronto. Many bars and restaurants are around. The playing hall is nearby. Today it's Sunday and we're expecting many chess fans to visit the tournament. Let's go to the studio and follow the action. Six players are still only one point from the lead, but time is beginning to run short. Can anyone break away from the pack? Day 10 starts right now. Hello and welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm your host Nazi Paikidze and I'm here with Grandmasters Yasser Sarawan and Evgeny Miroshenko. Nazi, Evgeny, Evgeny yes. nice to be with you both. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. 2024 candidates, well round nine was not kind to American chess fans as both Americans. Hikaru lost terribly I want to say and Fabi was unable to uh, defeat the tail ender. So just not a good day and they're struggling. They stand at a mere 50%. Ouch. They're not getting it done. They're going to have to perform. Nasi, <laughs> tell us about the standings. Let's take a look. In the open section we have two co-leaders, Yanni Pomnichi and Gukesh with five and a half points. Only half point behind in clear third is Prague. And at 50% are three players, Fabiano Caruana, Bidid and Hikaru Nakamura. And the standings for the ladies after nine rounds. In the ladies, we have a clear leader, Tan Zhonggi, with six points. Sharon second, Karyachkina and Lei, and Katrina Lachno in the clear fourth. I'm on solid ground by saying the challenger is likely to come out of the, those top four players. Tell us about the pairings for this round 10. A very exciting games going on. Hikaru Nakamura playing Nija Arapasov, Fabiano Caruana facing Ali Reza Firuja, Yanni Pomnichi against Gukesh. There is our marquee matchup for the day right there as the two leaders face off. And Prague against Vidit. And this is the, how do they match up? Not very often. They've only had three classical games so far. Gukesh has won one game and the other two are drawn. Intriguing. And uh, the pairings for the ladies. In the latest, we have Lahno playing Muzichuk, Garyashkina playing Lei, Salimova against Vaishali, and tournament leader Tan Zhongi is, uh, is playing Han Pikunero. Those games on boards two and four sure look uh, like they're going to be dramatic in deciding the event. And our remaining schedule. Today, players are playing round 10. Tomorrow, they'll have a rest day. And in case of a tie, we'll have a special tie breaks day on April 22nd. Lovely, thank you. And Miro, what do you have for us today? Uh, well, I thought, uh, you know, uh, we are getting closer and closer to the end of the tournament and therefore should probably pay more attention to, you know, today's pairing, what does it reflect in terms of the standings? Right. right, so for today we have two American players facing the outsiders, so in a way kind of an easier pairing for the U.S. Grandmaster, so Hikaru Nakamura gets a chance to come back after yesterday's loss. So today he's white against Nijata Vasov and kind of jumping ahead his position looks quite promising. Oh, good. Uh, yes, Fabiano Caruana is facing Alireza Firuja. Same with the white pieces, so possibly a chance for Fabiano. Both Fabiano and Hikaru need, desperately need a win to Absolutely. be considered serious contenders. 
Then we have Prague against Vidit. So once again, Vidit bounces back when it doesn't, you know, kind of doesn't want to stay down. <laughs> no, the does. moment he loses and we think, okay, he's falling off, he's right back. Okay, that's a, that's a tense game and we'll see what emerges out of it. But all of those, all of the above mentioned players, they'll be, while playing the games, looking at the very top because right. Nepo is playing Gukash. And that's a big one right. because in case of a draw and somebody else winning a game, they're kind of getting closer. But if this gets resolved, if either Nepo or Gukash wins, they pretty much run away. Absolutely. Okay, and on that note, once again, Anastasia from Toronto. Hello, Yasser, Nazi, and Miro. I'm here for the 10th round of the FIDE Candidates Tournament. The tension is growing, and yesterday the chess world was rocked yet by another drama. Alireza Firuja, after the game, published this tweet in, the, in his account where he mentioned what happened during the game. Shameful action by the chief arbiter Margetis towards me during the game. Middle of the game, in the most intense moment when I was walking during Jan move, chief arbiter came to me and told me not to walk anymore because my shoe is making noise on the wooden floor. And this tweet, of course, got a lot of attention from chess fans. Everybody is discussing it right now. I hope we will follow up with the story later on. And But of course, follow our social media accounts to get more information and insights. And now back to you guys. Chess just doesn't get more interesting than that. <laughs> a creaking floor. Oh my goodness, what will they think of next? The players are fighting hard. Creaking floors notwithstanding. <laughs> <laughs> what are they fighting for? Prize money. Let's do it. In the open, the prize fund is as follows. First place, 48,000 euros. Second place, 36. Third place, 24. And in addition, each player will receive 3,500 euros for every half point scored. And for the ladies? In the ladies, first place, 24,000. Second place, 18. Third place, 12. And each player will receive additional 1750 for every half point scored. Thank you, Nasi. Let's just jump right into it. What's happening in our marquee matchup of our two tournament leaders, Miro? Uh, well, as much as I would like it to be <laughs> exciting, you know, in all honesty, it's probably not. So the position after 28th move rook to c2, uh, computer slightly favors black. Perhaps the rook is a bit more active, but you know, e even number of pawns and also like with only rooks being on the board, Mm, not too much action I'm expecting right. here. Very likely a draw, which makes it interesting for, you know, for half of the tournament. <laughs> right, exactly. And there was one moment I wanted to pay attention. Uh, so it was a very original opening line. And over here, uh, well, Jan Nepomnishi went with rook d3, planning to shift the rook along the third rank. Looks provocative because black plays c5, threatens c4. Right. And Jan in the game went rook g3 with the tempo because he threatens queen h6. And yeah, but it didn't work out. And it turns out, computer says c5, c4 is not really threatening. So c3, interestingly, was a very strong move after which white would have had an advantage. And the difference would be if black indeed goes c4, then he goes rook g3. Queen h6 is a huge threat, so any, any move black has has to be a king move. Let's say we go to h8, bishop c2, bishop d5, e d5, and compared to the game, white preserves the very active bishop on c2 as, uh, yeah, like black, the black knight keeps the knight on a5, which is not very helpful, specifically defending the king side. While in the game, after rook g3, king h8, and then c3, Black does it differently. He doesn't go c4. He trades the trades the bishop, trades the knight, and yeah, fr from then on, Black was totally fine. Mm. So, well, uh, perhaps a bit of a missed opportunity by Jan, but not such a huge one. Even after the correct c2, c3, he wasn't really winning. Yeah, in the game, a variation which was rook g3. For as we were coming on, I thought king f8. Absolutely. Wouldn't that have led? To yeah, small. It looks somewhat counterintuitive, right? With a lot of pieces to keep the king on f8, but almost automatically, because c5, c4 is a threat, yeah, so almost automatically white goes c3. Munch, munch. And if we compare this one to the position in the game where the king was on h8 and f7 pawn was hanging, here 
Well, I can it's play. not really better for black, right? But you can go rookie five. I feel like I want to investigate my chances. Absolutely. So in this bit. case, it's black who is more comfortable. Right. Uh, once again, like if you ask compute, it's always going to find some way for white to, to keep the balance. The... Right. But so it was just a tiny bit uh, more precise than king hairs. Splitting hairs. Splitting hairs. And again, the current position you say is as dry. Rook c2. Draw, draw, draw. That's what computers voting for. Says, well, we go rookie one, perhaps to, sure. to yeah take Check take it. the file. Right. And if you think of it, like if White, say, kind of gives up on any ambition and just wants to hold it, you go rookie one. Rookie you go rookie three. three. And <laughs> you guard this guy, right. and you just just don't move. You know, exactly. G three, King G two, and stay still. And in exactly. black country, they do anything about it. So yeah. Jan is safe, and at the same time, Gukish is safe. So I don't see this game being anything but a draw. Well, like you say, I mean, if. If we had a result by uh, one of our tournament leaders, they're running away with it. The rest of the field wants to see those guys draw. Let's jump into the game of Hikaru for a moment, because when when we were coming into studio, I really liked uh, Hikaru's position, and it, it just felt like he was the one dictating. Now, see, what's your take on uh, the situation? Yeah, White well, definitely already has a very comfortable advantage. He didn't play the knight e3 move we were discussing. That was the one that we liked. We were looking. Mm -hmm. So our variation, remind me again, it was knight e3, bishop a5, right? And then rook e2, c1. And this was the nice move. Mm -hmm. So we were taking on c3. And how did this line go again? We were, we were taking on e7. Actually, we're looking at knight g6 move instead. Bishop oh, pardon g3 me. And... Apo apologies, you're right. We were looking at knight g6. Now we were moving our bishop, mm -hmm. yes? Yes. And now we were taking on c3. Yeah, this and, is about where we stopped. And how our our conclusions were we we, we thought mm -hmm. that okay, black's pieces oh. were a little bit uh, on the back row, mm -hmm. so and not as nicely coordinating, I think, right. as white's pieces where the rook white's rooks are on open files, we're ready to win a pawn back. And it looked pretty good. He didn't play this. He played bishop g3. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Let me just... And uh, Nijad still played bishop a5. Okay. Now we have rook e6 on the board. This also looks good for white. Because after bishop e6, maybe Hikaru wants to play rook b8. Okay. That's a little <laughs> bit annoying. Uh, especially when you've got... Uh, I... Exactly. I remember the first time I fell into this trap, I was very annoyed. It took me several turns of falling into this <laughs> trap of bishop takes h7. So rook b8. You uh, have to cover it. Not, not, that, oh, not that pleased with this move. Maybe I have to cover it this way? Then what happens? I have bishop d6 here maybe? Yikes. Bishop to d6. My goodness, if I have to give up my queen for just a rook and a bishop, I do have a weakness. Mm. Uh, I'm not I'm not happy. Uh, can I do it a different way? Can I take with the pawn? Nisha did already take with the bishop. He uh, did, sorry. Okay, then let's just stay with this. Bishop takes e6. I'm getting myself into a maybe, little bit of trouble. After maybe bishop d8 is not so bad. It looks bad, but it it's looks, temporary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just played bishop a5. Mm -hmm. You know, I hate... I hate Taking my moves back. Okay, bishop d8, temporary inconvenience, you say. Queen d7. Maybe white can improve just knight e3. Right, let me get out of this pin. I hate being in pins. <laughs> Still, you're right. Maybe it's not as knight c6 and bishop e7. Maybe I can unwind. Black needs a couple of moves, but in the meantime, we could maybe win the a pawn. Can, can we play rook a8 here? Yes. Lo uh, I love that. Rook a8 going after the a-pawn. Uh, Miro, our tournament leaders, it, it looked like when we left it with you, uh, a draw was more or less inevitable. Are they finding a way of repeating or not? Mm. No. I no. think what happens here, yes. it's not the way of repeating, but the way of simplifying everything. Okay. Because, yeah. What was the position we've seen? Yeah, yeah rookie one rook was one. played, and king h7 and rook e8, and rook c7 and rook a8. Now a trade on c3 happens. Oops, no, no, not rook d2, please. Uh, rook c3, 
rook a6 and then you attack this guy and white takes and black takes and white goes here and those pawns will be exchanged as well. So that, that's, yeah, that's called the hoovering. Yeah, right? the hoovering, yes. Uh, uh, draw looks really inevitable there. How is Fabi doing? Let's check Fabi's game. Indeed. He had I a very interesting be... opening. It started as Nydorf, right. and then Fabi played six move rook g1. Right. I'm not sure what it's called, that line. Um, Does it have I any? know. Alexander Shabalov, uh, amongst a, a group of uh, strong grandmasters, uh, I think Alexei Shirov. It's, I would almost call, call it uh, the Latvian the line. Could the, be what I remember. What I remember, yes. Often, uh, Ivanchuk has won a game against none else but Garry Kasparov with this one. Also with once, yeah, with Rook G one. So that's. The rook g1 line, let's call it this. <laughs> exactly. Now, for me, the move h5, well, that's a radical solution to yes. stop you from uh, playing uh, any further. It's funny, uh, in, the, in the 70s, let's just say, 60s and 70s, uh, bishop g5 absolutely, absolutely dominated everything. And after e6, f4, you could go with the uh, poison pawn, mm -hmm. main lines, people were experimenting with queen c7, knight d7, bishop e7, Poligayevsky uh, began with b5. And it's almost like, okay, if I could play rook g1 and you play h5, I start to think, can I play bishop g5 and then go into those variations where after maybe e6, mm -hmm. I've taken away h6 and g5. But the question is, which move was more useful, rook g1 or h5? <laughs> exactly. Uh, we're, I'd have thought h5 is a, a mistake. By the way, uh, as we're discussing the game of Fabi, we've got an official word that uh, draw was agreed. Uh, this all-important clash between our two tournament leaders, it just leaves the window open for somebody uh, to join. Maybe it will be It's a proper. great result for Gukesh drawing with black. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And for Jan, I must say, uh, Jan, we know. He's a streaky player, and he's a player who plays a great deal with confidence. These draws and a mix of a win here and there is just instilling him with a greater and greater confidence. Mm -hmm. He's going to be feeling very, very happy about himself. In fact, let's ask Nepo if he feels happy with himself. Mm -hmm. We're going to jump to Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here with Jan Nepomnesi. Jan, thank you for joining us. Are you happy with the result of the game today? You made a draw with Gukesh. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like it's a normal game. Uh, it's quite quite important to play like a normal game, especially after what I did yesterday. Uh, but uh, let's say, uh, of course, I I know I would prefer like to to put a bit more pressure. But uh, I don't know. This knight g7 like became trendy recently, and it's like not as no, not not as simple as it may might seem. So well, uh, I think I had this d4 idea. Um, one of the one of the like possible things to do, but I wasn't like sure what was my notes like afterwards. And uh, I think Bishop E7 is a bit passive, but I couldn't find like the way to to prove. Maybe I should have tried C4 in the opening. Maybe after Bishop E7, like C4 makes some sense, you know, grab some space, then just Knight C3, and this position should be. Uh, no, not not here, not here. I guess uh, yeah, Knight E5. Of course, here like Bishop B2 is like whatever, like slightly better. Uh, but I mean, uh, instead of, um, hang on, uh, like here instead of knight c3, I think c4 was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Or maybe start with bishop d2, like, I mean, his only, basically, only idea, like, to find four qualities, play b5 and, and uh, knight d5, so okay, bishop d2 is smart, but maybe instead of bishop d2, just play c4 here. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, he can go for f5, because, okay, he also, like, he didn't do any, any, anything too bad. And then, like the second moment, I think in the game it was like about here. All right, so uh, oh, I could start with C3. Oh, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, C3 was nice. C3 was nice. Yeah, uh, uh, well. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe maybe may, may, maybe should be a draw anyway. Yeah, but C3 was uh, was interesting. But I mean, okay, C3 w would work like it uh, would be some. Uh, 
some very nice positions for me, but okay, uh, maybe it's just a draw by force as well. Why are you trying just oh, to get so some playable position, let's say, just a little bit better for you? Yeah, but I mean, it, and, and in this position, let's say, after h3 or without h3, just play knight e3 instead. And this is like um, a tiny bit better, but for a very long term, because okay, he's not really happy with trading uh, pieces on b3. But as it was in the game, okay, he basically provoked me to take with the pawn. And I mean, I would be still, you know, pressing a little bit if here, let's say, uh, instead of b4, I could play the side like a rook e3, maybe. Uh, sorry. Okay, we can go back like here. Yeah, uh, like uh, between the seven and rook e3. And maybe, okay, let's say rook e3, queen e3, and let's say queen e5. I would queen of five is important, but okay, after c4, he just trades, puts the queen's, puts his queen on f6, and it's like an equal position. Mm -hmm. So if I would like grab the e file, and okay, I could put a little bit of pressure, but uh, this is unfortunately not so realistic here. Yeah, okay, it seems like uh, the game was pretty balanced, finished in a draw. Um, it was still very important for the standings because you played yeah. with one of yeah. the leaders. But what, what approach did you have before? Like you have to try to win no matter what, or draw is a good result? Well, uh, I wanted to like put some pressure and to see mm -hmm. how the game will go, but um, yeah, he Played came well up with an interesting mm -hmm. choice in the opening, yes, so he, uh, well, once again, uh, it's hard to be ready for uh, for every line in chess, yes, so, well, I think uh, I could, of course, squeeze, could try to squeeze some more, but, I mean, the game is decent, yeah, like, for sure. He played all right. All right. One more question, I want to ask you if you are following Twitter and news these days or trying to avoid uh, uh, no, checking no, no, anything. Uh, before the wow, this is really interesting. What we'll which uh, probably you know catch up. We'll, we'll try to catch up uh, you know, in a week or something. Yeah. Okay. For now, yeah, I'm separated. <laughs> with social with social media, yeah. did you make any other restrictions because of the event happening? I mean, do you uh, somehow cut uh, the amount of people you are talking to these days and things like that? No, I'm mainly talking to uh, to my family, to my to my team. Yes. Yeah, so, but uh, I would say like in uh, usually I don't. I don't have too many people around here as well, so I don't think there is uh, there was too much to change. Yeah, like just try to be more focused. Well, for sure. Thank you, Jan, and all the best of luck in the next rounds. Thank, Thank you. you. We are good. Thank you indeed, and uh, to our two tournament leaders, they're looking very splendid mm -hmm. and happy at the top. Uh, we we got interrupted in the game of uh, Hikaru and Nijat. Hikaru has captured on e6. Bishop takes e6. And during the interview with Jan, I began to get more um, excited mm -hmm. about Hikaru's chances. Rook b8, this is becoming really serious. You wanted, I didn't want, nobody really wants to play the move bishop d8. And then you, then you whispered in my ear, yes, or win a pawn. <laughs> uh, go for the a pawn. And I began to think, you know what? Bishop d6 and bishop takes a3. That's uh, looking uh, very, very attractive uh, uh, to my way of thinking. I mean, I, you can win the pawn on G, like, for example, you can go queen d6, yes? Right, that's why white could also include knight e3 first. Right. To get, and then go after the e3 pawn, just to protect g4 pawn. But then you'd have to go with the, with rook. the rook. Yes. So I was looking at a position more or less like, ah, uh, yes, this, this, right? Mm -hmm. Then I would go here. And so I, I still want mm -hmm. the knight e3, but I, I like the idea that you were in, you know, some kinds of pins. That is to say that black is in some kinds of pins. That's a really nice position, and the black queen looks overloaded. It's defending too many things. Right. The other option is what you've just described, was knight e3, mm -hmm. queen d7, and you go for the a pawn with the rook. And did he play rook b8? I don't see it yet. Yeah, that's the, that is definitely... that. Time's a factor? No, the, um, Hikaru has 32 minutes, Nijad 48. Okay. So no time trouble in this game. I do like Hikaru's position. I think with rook b8, he, he will be enjoying the tidings. Mira, what do you have for us? Uh, well, I was looking at uh, the, this, same, the same game, right? right. And rook b8. I'm um, trying to explain like why it takes Hikaru so much time to decide on rook b8, because rook b8 is asking to be played, and right. then whenever you see something like bishop d8 on the board, you you can choose, right? right. So if you know black replies with bishop d8, you are not unhappy to play. Right. So I was thinking, could this be that? Something like that would work mm. for black. 
has stopped. And yeah, and you know, the answer it doesn't, and you can uh, deduct so from looking at the evaluation bar. However, like practically speaking, it's not so easy. And white, in fact, has to play like with great energy. So pretty much it's queen f4 or queen g3. Yeah, yeah. In white in the rook on b2. Is white in the a2 pawn? Yes. Yeah, that's very scary. And queen d6. And it's not that easy to spot, I believe, that uh, well, you <laughs> give away the a2 pawn, get, right. uh, black gets a very dangerous passed pawn on dangerous a3. Looking, yeah. But the real problem is this knight on, e, on e7 is like kind of seriously misplaced. And then you're coming with those attacking ideas like queen, one. queen e8. And so, however, now that I'm looking at it, Computer is not convinced about, say, this position. <laughs> 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 to give, it gives plus one to right. white. But uh, Plus well, one's is not it that winning? Much. Yeah, it's not that much for, for like having a queen versus two bishops. So there could be some potential for what you call fortresses. Let me right? just interrupt you, Meryl, yep. and we're going to jump to uh, Toronto, where Anastasia caught up with Gukesh. We are here with Gukesh. You just met the draw against Jan Nepomnes. A very important game for you today. Um, how did did you feel pressure today during the round? Um, yeah, for, from the from the start there has always been some pressure, and it, today was no no different. Uh, surely some some nerves, but uh, nothing more than the usual. So yeah, you choose to play this knight g to e seven line. Uh, Jan said it's getting popular, but still he was kind of surprised. Um, let's say, how did your preparation go? Well, yeah, this knight g seven is uh, it's an interesting line. I mean, it's been known for quite some time, but. Uh, but yeah, I thought it would uh, uh, it would be nice to you know uh, surprise him in the opening, and uh, yeah, he was surprised and he played this uh, d4, which is okay, not uh, one of the most critical lines. And uh, yeah, I, I I I'm sure I checked this queen e3, but I couldn't remember anything on the board, so I was just playing uh, playing on my own. Mm -hmm. And I thought this bishop e7, this might not be the most accurate, but I started calculating and I couldn't see how how white could uh, make use of it. And basically, what I calculated happened in, happened in the game. So b5, knight a5, and yeah, maybe he has like one more to create something, but uh, I couldn't see how. I mean, if I get taken bishop b7, it's uh, it's just equal. So I played queen g3, bishop d6. I mean, knight b3. Yeah, A B three was also possible, but I thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I thought okay, Bishop D six is quite a nice move. I mean, Queen G four. Now I can, if he goes Queen G four, I can take and go Bishop E five, and I'm already taking over, I think. Wow. But uh, yeah, he went Bishop F four, the safest way, and I mean, yeah, just a normal position, and at some point we just traded everything. Yeah, he said that he probably missed some chances to press more by playing like maybe before like bishop d2 uh, in order to stop your idea with b5 and uh, I will show you somewhere he here maybe maybe bishop d2 somewhere here maybe just he thought maybe it would be trickier but still let's yeah, say you don't have castle. that many yes it would just castle, right? I mean, so probably he still needs a couple of time passes yes, to mm -hmm. to get rid of these oh, ideas. Maybe he can start with bishop b3. Yes, and maybe here, yes, bishop b3. Ah, so I don't get this tempo. Eh? Yeah. Oh, this might have been mm -hmm. possible. But it's hard to say now. Let's say after. I mean, he saw it after the game. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the tournament situation right now? I mean, the old, last couple of rounds. Like, how how did you feel, and what do what do you think about the whole? What's happening in the in the plane when you? Uh, yeah, I feel pretty good. I feel I'm in good shape and I'm in good spirits. So yeah, uh, about the tournament situation. Um, I mean, the games are still going on, and I guess only Prague can catch catch us if yes. he wins. So mm -hmm. yeah, let's see how that goes. But anyways, um, I think uh, before the last four rounds, I. I put myself in a pretty good position, so yeah, it depends on uh, how I how I play in the next few games, and hopefully it will be 
it'll be good. Yeah, this of course is very critical and important. The last rounds, um, Jan just told me that he cut all the connection with social media. He doesn't follow anything. What about you? Are you following? Are you posting something? Uh, no, in general, I don't use much, and during the tournament, not at all. So, yeah, I haven't really opened anything from the start of the event. So, <laughs> so but uh, yeah, my team is taking care of the other things. So. I guess it's good. Yeah. So you try to focus on the tournament and only on the tournament without distractions. Yeah. Uh, as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Thank you so much, Gukesh. All the best of luck for you in the next rounds. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. And with that draw yeah. of our tournament leaders, let's take a look how that impacts our standings as both players. Right, they still share the first place. Yanni Pomishi and Gukesh with six points now. And the only player who can catch them is Prague if he wins his game today. Exactly. Fabi, Vidit, Hikaru, all needing a victory. And with a victory by any one of those three players, they would be only a half a point behind the tournament leaders. But they really need to put together some wins. Uh, Sending back to you, Amiro, how's Bobby's chances of winning? Uh, well, computer likes white at the at present moment after King white's D2. last move, king c1 to d2. Uh, well, this end game is on the board for mm, quite a few moves already. Yes. And there was an interesting moment right before the end game has happened, right? So there have been, as you, we already pointed out, there was a funny little rook g1 h5 exchange after right. which uh, yeah rook g1 is a variation in itself and black can allow g4 and go from here but we will not delve that deep uh miro just yep. because you have it on the board right Absolutely. now could you tell me what the openings called openings uh how it's called yeah it, it's I not guess. called anything yeah well, neither well, so, well, I'm says, sorry so, so, yeah. to read it, but it says Freak Attack. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's the official name, yes, so that, it's not my fault. <laughs> okay, okay, never mind, uh, never mind. Yeah, some <laughs> classification of, you know... <laughs> no, I'm not going to write a bestseller. <laughs> some classification of chess openings needs to be improved on. But anyway, yes. what I was thinking, that's a very peculiar position because white once again gets to choose which variation he wants to play right. with the inclusion of rook g1 and h5. Like, right. For instance, in our case, Fabi went for bishop c4, which would be known as Sozin variation, Sozin attack against right. the knight of, once again with the rook on h1, pawn on h7. Right. Uh, anyway, later on, that's the peculiar moment. Yes, yeah, so after knight c6, computer was suggesting to uh, take on c6, yeah, and go from there. But we were we were not sure what happens after knight b3 because it seems like white's winning a tempo. It turns out Firuja's idea was to go for this end game, which is uh, okay. which is the right thing to do. H2, H4, and then here comes the mistake. Bishop e6. It's computer immediately highlighted. It's a bad move, everything. But the tactic to refute bishop e6 was not only cute, but also not easy to spot. So bishop e6 should have been played, and then e5. And even seeing this one on the board, you don't quite understand what's going on, right? Right. Because, yeah, white is a queen up, but the queen is always pinned, and you almost pretend like the queen and the bishop is not there. And then e5 doesn't make any sense. But it turns out you have no time for black to capture the queen kind of in the right moment. Hanging. So if you take here, knight is hanging twice, so the right. pawn is, uh, the pawn survives, right? After, yeah, yeah, let me get back to e5, yes. Capturing with the knight loses on a spawn after f4, and this is a beautiful move, beautiful motif, if you, if you wish. So queen is unpinned, so black has strictly only moved to capture the queen back. And then two knights attacking to, uh, or rather two pawns attacking two knights, which is a unique setup. We, Absolutely. We agreed, I think, that we've never seen this one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, and then white wins the bit. Okay, you can see this one in a game of an absolute beginners. So white attacked the knight, knight didn't go away. White attacked the other knight instead of capturing the first one. Anyway, there was a beautiful tactic available to Fabi. 
he went with bishop e2, after which computer says, no, now it's nothing for white at all because bishop b3, this I'm not sure of, but wow. somehow computer Get loves exchanging this knight, then it captures, goes knight d7, and playing something like this, which I would expect to be better for white nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Kind of a bit more space, you know. Right, and when black did not take on b3, then we are getting this kind of position and eventually black has to take on g5. That's exactly what happened. And anyway, so that's what we have on the board. Computer has it as, well, 0.5, so half a pawn for white, which you would expect it to be, right? I mean, white's more comfortable, somewhat more, you know, center influence, and the knight got stuck on g4. If you think right. of it, like you don't want to take up to the moment when you just take and win the g4 pawn. Like right. say, I, I imagine you go knight d1, not yeah. here, but somewhere. Right. And your knight's on d1, and then you take on knight e3, and it's a weak pawn. Yeah. So black is not fully comfortable here, and Fabi might have some chances still. Yeah, thank you, Mero. And let's see how these two match up against one another. And I suspect they've played a number of times. Uh, quite a lot of games, yes. They've played 13 classical games. Five wins for Fabi and only one loss. So that's a big, big plus score. Wow. And for those of you joining us late, there's a small little controversy that broke out after a tweet by Ali Reza. We're going to turn it to Toronto and Anastasia is going to break it down for us. What happened, Anastasia? Thanks, guys. As I mentioned before, we had this shoe accident with Salireza Firuja yesterday on the round nines of the FIDE candidates. We were very lucky that uh, Mike Lane, the journalist from Chesscom, spoke with the international arbiter Aris Margidis after the game and he found out um, the information. Thanks, guys. We are here with Chief Arbiter Aris Margidis after the tweet from Salireza Firuja. Everyone wants to know what exactly happened in the tournament hall today for round nine. Uh, thanks, Mike. So, about just over an hour into the, into the round. Um, like we have a bit of an old building here, and so the, the floors are a bit creaky. Uh, the players are used to that. When most players walk around during the tournament, uh, you don't hear them walking, you hear the creak. However, there was a certain point after, you know, after about 60 minutes in, when uh, Mr. Frugia was in the refreshment area, walking in a very limited space, like pacing. And players do that all the time. That's like a, that's fine. But um, he had a very heavy footfall. You could you could hear. It sounded like boots, you know. Like it was. It wasn't. It wasn't creaking. It was. I mean, I don't know what word to use. Uh, it, it was stompish, if you will. And so I was beginning to get a little bit concerned. I thought, well, this is this is too much noise. I'm wondering if this is disturbing anyone. And as I was reaching the conclusion that this is getting too loud, uh, one of the players, the other players, actually officially complained to me. And it was, uh, it was a player who was closest to where that was. And so when the player told me, I mean, as the chief arbiter, I have a few responsibilities. One of them is to protect all of the players, the tournament, the integrity of the game. And so I had to kind of make a decision here. Well, is he disturbing more than I would disturb him, let's say. So what I did at that point is I went to the refreshment area and I didn't want to intrude on Mr. Fruja's space. So I kind of kept a certain distance and waited for him to kind of make eye contact with me. He did. They waited a little bit longer, and it seemed to be a, a welcoming, yeah, what do you want, Chief Arbiter? So I went up to him, and I said, there's, there's been a complaint about, about the noise you're making walking in this little area here. Um, so I, a couple of suggestions, you know, maybe you could spread your walking area. I don't know if that resonated. I don't know if that clicked the way I said it, because we're whispering to each other. I said, you could spread your walking area, and I said, maybe tomorrow if you have some softer shoes, you could, you know, consider trying those. So I didn't, that's all I did. I made two suggestions. I didn't in any way give an ultimatum, I didn't in any way threaten any kind of uh, discipline or anything like that. The two suggestions, I find that's the, that's like a great way to deal with people is you, you know, give them ideas and together we'll work at, work at a, a compromise. Um, so I, I think at that point in the game, I think that, you know, it just kind of fluke. He was in that small area pacing and it, it bothered the player. Thank you, Mike, and just come for the interview. We will definitely keep an eye on the story. And now back to you guys. Thank you for that, Anastasia. I knew they would get down to it, you know. <laughs> the shoe scandal, the shoe incident. Uh, we have a few moves in the Hikaru game. Let's uh, right, let's pick up on it. Rook takes e6, bishop takes e6. We had 
dot, come on, you know, let, let, let's go. Uh, rook to b8, bishop, I go forwards with an attacking move like rook b8. You go backwards with a defensive move like bishop to d8. Uh, sign me up. That was not what Hikaru did. Hikaru played instead. The second, rook, rook b, b7, rook threatening b7. bishop d6, right? Right. Oops. So black had a choice to move the knight to g6, rook c6 or c8. And looks like Nijad chose poorly because after knight c8, yes. now if white plays g5. G5, but that, that is very, very suggestive. When mm -hmm. you see the bishop uh, eyeballing h7, you start to think to yourself, well, gee, especially if the rook, it's a kind of a funny x-ray, right? You think the rook on the seventh rank does not attack the h7 square until it does. Mm -hmm. It's like we go queen h5, g6, bishop takes, and it's sort of like, <laughs> wow. Suddenly we see the whole point of rook b7. Knight c8, blunder alert, g5. Uh, again, Hikaru has not yet played the move g5, but this is so suggestive, Miro. I just, I really can't imagine him playing anything else. Uh, wow. Uh I think the difficulty is that Please. after queen c6, you have to take a decision. And uh, you're right that g5 is a strong move, but you kind of have to have to see the whole the whole line. Right. If you will. Okay. Because we're say, sacking a rook. Yeah. Before uh, before checking with the computer, I was thinking something like that is very you know very attractive. Right. Like you go here, and then you maybe like try to take on h6 or take on g7, on g7, which in fact, leads to white's advantage. So okay. this is better for white, but not in the way you would think. So, because mm. it looks like black, uh, black is getting checkmated, but mm. he has this little move f5, and the position on the board that we're going to have will be something like this. Right. And who knows what's going on. Yeah, so now, like, queen ta uh, bishop takes, queen takes is bad for black. Don't yes. ask me why, but Three computer... Pawns. Yeah, trust the computer when, whenever it gets sharp. Yeah. Right, so queen to f7 is the line computer suggests, and then takes on c3, and, you know, like, knight e7, g... Yeah, knight e7, takes this one, takes on c3, knight e3, takes on d5. So a lot, a lot of, you know, exchanges, eliminations, a lot of tactics. So it's not that easy to calculate, right? And the other thing after queen c6, and probably a better move, is rook to b8. Mm -hmm. Takes queen h5. Queen h oh, well, you probably just decide on this. You say it's a good position. I didn't lose any, any of my pawns, right? Bishop c3. So the only worry that you might have is bishop c3, but then bishop e5. And knight g3 and knight h5. And yeah, knight this one's hanging. Knight g3, knight h5. Yeah, right, you are. So, there is no argument against g5, after all. Right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, actually, the, the, the move that you were about to suggest was hg, pardon me, queen c6. Yep, queen c6. And I was, I was actually, where was I? I was looking at g takes. Oh, sacking the rook. Yes, exactly. Sacrificing the rook. Where did I want to go? There was a... Yeah, but it's uh, not that easy to uh, follow uh, up this one. A line I had calculated was mm -hmm. takes. King takes. Takes. Bishop b Queen okay. h5. I was thinking I'm threatening check and mate. Have I you possibly met rook. Michael Pahl in person? Ever. Yes. <laughs> Many times. And it was my great honor to there meet. Is a, there is a feeling. Yeah. There is, it felt like, well, okay. Computer... Uh, uh, well, will tell me I'm uh, I'm full of hot air. Not really, not really. Well, not Queen H5. So your original thesis is right. It's it is very interesting, and I'm not even sure if not it's not winning. So if we go back to to your line with right. G5 and well, we, what we say, C6, Queen C6, take, we take here take. and we take here. Right. Uh, Black has strictly only move King, King to G. King to G7. Right. And then Queen H5, for whatever reason, is not very good, but Bishop, Bishop E5, E5 is but super interesting. Need... Bishop E5, you would expect F6, F6 otherwise only it's now. just a checkmate. And Knight to G3. Whoa, 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 whoa. And yeah, this gives this you even more is... of a Michael Tile vibes. <laughs> Black apparently cannot take this guy because Knight H5. 
And okay, this is yeah, fun. and white this just is fun. White's just winning. Okay, so this and a check and a here and a check and and you you just interestingly you just collect a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, because it felt we've sacrificed that much that we either checkmate or we lose. Yeah, in, right. in fact, white has won. Back. Quite a lot of material back. Exactly. Yeah, according still to, down the rook. According to the machine, this this for instance is still like winning for white. <laughs> yeah, yes. but I'm threatening queen h6 and not a big deal. Right? Down the rook, not a big deal. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so this works out for white, but after knight g3, g3. some stupid move like rook f7 in computer wow. gives roughly equal evaluation, which you probably expect wow. to be a perpetual rather than white winning. So rook f7 wants to hide on f8. So say in case of knight h5, king goes to f8, it's yeah, knight f6, gives equal whatever it means. So I presume there could be some, some perpetual, but there is no need for that, right? No. Once again, if he, ooh, you, 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 and Hikaru just made a move, which was bishop to f4, which computer seriously Dislikes. criticizes. White is still slightly better. But G5 was... But yeah, but G5 was very powerful. Was so pretty game. much he does the same, but much slower, right? So this gives black a chance to play queen C6. Now no sacrifices whatsoever. So rook has to leave to say on B1. And then black gets to play knight E7. So black kind of regroups once again, establishes coordination and probably the game goes on. So it's, it's a serious miss by Hikaru. I, playing this bishop f4. I'm really stunned. I, it's, no, no, seriously, this move, bishop f4, and in conjunction with yesterday's, yesterday's game, where Hikaru played, I want to say, timidly uh, against Vidit, uh, this is not the Hikaru who, you know, throws caution to the wind and takes his chances even when he's worse playing for a win. Uh, bishop f4, so slow. You know, if this was a blitz game, he would have played g5 instantly. Instantly. Yeah, yeah that's any the, the, that's compunction. Even, absolutely. Yeah, like g5, you can try to go through all those lines that I was showing and you guys were trying to calculate. But at the same time, if you just, yeah, you know, behave logically, ask yourself, Will there be a better chance to go g5 in this game? No, no. because the knights on c8, like black is Queen all is over the place. A, yeah, right. just, just go back. for it. Everything. Just go for it. That is a very, very timid move, and he took some time in playing it too. How, how many minutes, uh, Nasi, did I it take him to play? I can't say that. How Bishop much time G3. he spent on it, but it was five, ten minutes maybe. Yaka do. Um, a game that we haven't really touched upon. Prague. Uh, he's on the outside looking in with a victory, he could join the leaders. Oops, bishops of opposite color looks Ooh, totally that, that, That's so, you know, so uninspiring. The, the, position, was, the <laughs> position on the board. And also if you check, no, no, seriously. If you check the opening, that, that's funny because d3, bishop c5 takes, Berlin takes. Delayed. So we had this. Yesterday was a pawn on a6, right? Right. Yes. In Gukesh's game against Prague with black. Four. Yes, right. Against Prague with black. So now Prague plays the same position with white. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Not much here. Uh, Not let's much. jump to the ladies. Let's check the leader, Tan Zhongyi, how she's doing against Humpi Konero. Exactly. Because that was actually a major piece ending. Where am I? They have queen uh, and rook ending, but in balance pawn structure. <laughs> yeah, and at the same time, this black king sitting uh, not so comfortably on the d8 square. If the black king were on c, on g8, pardon me, mm -hmm. it would be a much more common sure. looking position. Just a second. Who is on turn? So we have check, queen, what? Queen a5. I mean, it would be nice if you were threatening rook takes d6 check, but you're not. What right. was queen a5? Uh, maybe she wants rook e1, just to simplify. Okay, position, so... But I can play queen e5. And yeah, I, if I'm in black mm -hmm. shoes, I'm thinking a queen trade would take away the vulnerability of my king. Mm -hmm. Maybe on a good day I could trade queens and clip the pawn. What is queen a5? Ten... Uh, I mean, with this... Would you rather play white or black? Black. After? 
Yes, Slightly. the Queenie Phi. Well, if yeah, if the queens right. were off the board, right? Oh, then definitely, yes. Yeah. But even now, I still like, uh, she did not play Queenie Five. She played Rook Eight to E4. Maybe Rook. she's playing for a win. Maybe she wants to attack White's King. <laughs> Why not? Uh, okay, I'm still I'm still just coming to grips with the position. Ah, oh, Rook F. No, Rook F1 does cover E1 square. You don't have queen takes mm -hmm. because of my brilliant queen a5 uh, being on the a5 square suddenly. So I can play rook f1. I guess I can still go queen e5. And I can oh. take. I can take on a5 and then on g2. Right, exactly. And I wouldn't, yeah, I would not say that you're, you're worse at all. Okay, very very uh, peculiar position and the importance of this game cannot be overstated uh, from the standings. Right, as Tanjong is leading the tournament with six points, she's half point ahead of the two players, so today's result, if she wins this game, of course that would extend her lead, but looks like it will be a draw and maybe Goryachkina or Lei can catch up with her. Yeah, I definitely think Humpy is on the outside here, but just imagine on, you know, like a, a dream, uh, uh, bon voyage, uh, a victory today uh, narrows the gap from two to one with uh, some rounds uh, still to play. A uh, strange position, that one, but also we had another huge game going on, I wanted to say, between Al Alexandra and Lee. Um, I had come in and I was looking at this position. So this is kind of uh, from one of those... Um, exchange Slavs uh, mm -hmm. kinds of positions that we're, we're used to seeing. And it's sort of like white's pieces are there. I mean, all I need is a, is a pawn on a5, and I don't care about being a pawn down. And I, I'd love uh, to follow up on white's attack. The game went rook to c1, mm -hmm. king to g6, which is a nifty little move, getting out of the pin and basically saying, I'm not losing a piece because mm -hmm. the rook C1. on c1 was hanging. So Alexandra had to call off her attack. She played queen to c5, king h6, a4, a5, knight here. Isn't and we've caught up. With pretty the... good here. I like, uh, of course, black has the active queen, the bishop, and white's knight is kind of trapped because you can't really go knight d6 because I always have rook d6. Yep. That is for sure. Knight to b6, if I go back, now maybe you slide to f7 or something? Possibly. It's it's awkward that the the rook and queen are somehow kind of tethered. So we think that uh, Lee is just doing fine in this position. How about a game between Katja and um, Anna? It looks Those two like players a draw are... end game. Whoa, that went fast. We went from opening middle game straight into an ending. Three versus three. Yeah, I don't see anything going on there. Miro, where's the action? Where is the action? Let me let me find. <laughs> let me find the action. Yeah, well, Nakas, minutes game, right Nakas is, is the biggest, of course. Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed with him. With Bishop kind of not playing g5, and now after Bishop f4, Queen c6, Rook b8. Well, computer, the more it thinks, the less advantage it gives to White. It slips, yeah. Uh, right, and. and it was a bit, it felt a bit wasteful, like not playing knight e3 in time, you know, Somewhere, like bishop, yeah. bishop g3 to f4 doesn't do much mm -hmm. if you're not playing g5. So now with black to move, one of the suggestions is rook e8 to be able to move the knight and not to run into bishop h7, right? Right. So because we, we, yeah, we, I think, mentioned it, but in a different position. So knight right. e7 is, of course, the something that you wouldn't move. mind. Yeah. You wouldn't mind doing, but it loses the exchange. What? what? Interestingly, oops, no, no, not rook b7 for me. That was a misclick. Interestingly, even this one is not absolutely desperate. You, wow. You'd be surprised, but yeah, well, computer... Ah, because of knight g6. Now it says it's equal. Because yes, knight g6, g3. you have to move the rook, yeah. and then, take uh, well, just takes on c3. And you know, in a practical sense, 
I don't know, just look at it. Like it's, it's a very strong knight on f4 and then g4 is hanging. It's one pawn for the exchange. I'm, I'm a little mystified, sorry, help me out. Yep. Why can't I take on f4? Uh, what moment? Instead right of taking on c3. Yeah. And bishop c7? Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at that, but I think there's rook c8. Oh, bishop there's rook c8. c8. <laughs> Queen to c1, my friend. <laughs> I mean, I it's, not like, you it's <laughs> not like I've seen it. It's not like I've seen it, but I just learned not to argue with the machine. I mean, that's one absolutely fantastic geometry, right? I'm looking at bishop c7. With <laughs> right, that's an absolutely double. fantastic geometry. So queen to c1, and then it's a double attack, and it send, ends up white having a very active queen, which very likely will win the <laughs> three pawn. That's absolutely crazy. Nice, nice. Well, Thanks uh, for asking me this question, <laughs> Yasha, so that I can <laughs> highlight how powerful my little my, friend over there my, is. My engine is. Time's not a factor, though. 17 uh, minutes well, to 30. A little bit. One, I'd argue a little, a little bit. bit because, yeah, Hikaru, I think with his last couple of choices, he proved to be a bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And by the way, by the way, Nija just blundered. I don't think he did. Right. I think he's going for it. So he did play knight to e7. Inviting. Inviting all that. Check yeah. if you would like to win an exchange or not. Right. You know, that's the funny thing uh, today is we, we expect our opponents to be so tactically aware because of their work with the engines you sit there and say to yourself did my opponent just blunder or not you know 40 years ago we didn't care about whether you know our opponent blundered you know oh, yeah so kind of the expectation was different right yes, and whenever exactly. you would see something uh that you can kind of looks like you can do yeah. oh, okay he just blundered right and especially it was the case in the opening so yeah. this is what changed. So now your opponent blunders on move 10 and you are no, still no, no. not sure because no, no. it might have been some deep preparation. Exactly. No. No. Uh, we do expect the game between Prague and Evita to be heading towards a draw. Let's just see if they found some brilliant refutation. Uh, pardon me, repetition. Refutation. <laughs> Repetition to go for. No, it looks like a dead draw, and um, I mean, Bishops of opposite they color. just need to make nine more moves and they can offer a draw. Exactly. Unfortunately, from White's perspective, uh, it's ill advised to play a move like e5. g5, you simply cannot do uh, hg, and so we're seeing uh, pieces going to and fro. Time's not a factor, I assume, either. At 21 minutes against 25. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, we reached that uh, stage of our broadcast where it's time for us to take a break. And we're always very happy to check in on our friends at Q Boutique and see what our specials are. And here you go. We're happy to present the FIDE Clash for the Crown t-shirt. It is made of 100% cotton. This shirt celebrates 100 years of the FIDE and the exhibition The Clash for the Crown at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Available for you at QBoutiqueSTL.com. And as we go to break, let's go over to Toronto with Anast Anastasia and a special guest. See you on the other side of the break. We are here with the main producer of the movie, King Chess, Dylan Kvercha. You got it. And uh, I'm very excited about this premiere we had yesterday. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, it's an incredible thing to go start to finish with a documentary like this and something that I'm so passionate about. Uh, the chess world needs to see how amazing these people are and uh, we just loved showing all the behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. The movie is mainly about the Candidates Tournament 2018 Berlin. Um, how did you come up with the idea to make the movie about these top guys and uh, were you happy with the result? Uh, it's mostly because I'm a chess fan. And 2018, it was so exciting. We were just incredibly excited to go see the young and the, and the old come together in Berlin. And the average rating was so high. It was like 2,800 almost. In, in Berlin. Absolutely, it was a very strong event and in the end Fabiano managed to win. Were you happy that 
especially American player made it. Yeah, I'm Italian American, so I'm just super excited to, to have an Italian American like candidate. I mean, of course, an American candidate too, because it's been hard since Bobby Fischer. Uh, the world has been dominating the U.S., so to, to kind of flip it and, and actually have a U.S. player was very exciting. Yeah, I mean, everything worked for you. Let's yeah, say in this yeah. movie, and today we're in Toronto, and actually, it's the only Fabi is the only player who made it from Berlin 2018 yeah. here to Toronto. Are you, I mean, are you surprised about it that out of eight players, he was the only one who is today playing in the candidates? Oh yeah, I'm super surprised because. It seemed like those players were young then, and now we have 17 year olds. Like, it's incredible. Like, to have the players now are even younger by seven, eight years. Thank you, Dylan, for being here with us. It was a great movie, and I hope we will watch some other movies in the future. Yeah, please go to kingchessfilm.com to see. You can sign up for our mailing list, and we should be out by, we're supposed to be out this week, but hopefully by Monday we'll have be on all your major platforms that you'll like to watch it on. That's great news for chess fans. Thank you once again, and to, let's watch the movie. All right, thank you. The stages are set, the players are primed, the best of the best are ready to face off in the 2024 Grand Chess Tour. The top players in the world prepare to battle across four countries for a $1.5 million prize fund. Everything starts in Warsaw with the Superbet Rapid and Blitz Poland, then off to Bucharest for the Superbet Chess Classic Romania. The players then travel to Zagreb for the Super United Rapid and Blitz Croatia. The tour concludes with back-to-back -back events in St. Louis, Missouri, the chess capital of America for the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz and the Sinkfield Cup. Nine players will go in, but only one can be crowned champion. Who is prepared to make history? Get ready for the return of the Grand Chess Tour. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. championships as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The St. Louis Chess Club Scholastic Program brings the educational value of chess to kids and schools across the St. Louis area. Active in over 100 schools throughout the St. Louis city and county, the St. Louis Chess Club has been able to reach over 85,000 students in both in-school and after-school programs. We view chess as a valuable educational tool. Learn more about our scholastic programming by visiting stlouischessclub.org education. In the world of collegiate chess, there is no team rising quite like the one at the University of Missouri. The team has brought home title after title, including the 2024 Pan American Intercollegiate Championship, the first time ever in school history. Guided by their head coach, Christian Carilla, there is no stopping the Tigers. Respect, responsibility, discovery, excellence. University of Missouri. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. The World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. St. Louis, the chess capital of the United States. It also plays host to an award-winning shop dedicated to chess merchandise, all occasion gifts, and plenty more. At Q Boutique, you can shop both in-store and online. From quirky greeting cards to luxury chess sets, there is something for everyone at Q Boutique. Enjoy a shopping experience like no other. Make sure to check out QBoutiqueSTL.com for a wide variety of gifts for everyone to enjoy. At St. Louis University, chess and success go hand in hand. 
Founded in 2016, the St. Louis University chess team has risen to become recognized as one of the best in the nation, bringing home multiple titles, including the national championship in 2022. With members from nine countries and led by grandmasters Varuj Nakobian and Darius Fierks, the future is bright for the SLU chess team. Higher purpose, greater good. St. Louis University. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States and is among the best in the world. Thanks to co-founders Dr. Jeannie Cairn Sinkfield and Rex Sinkfield, the St. Louis Chess Club is a nonprofit organization committed to promoting the game of chess locally and internationally. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area, promoting cognitive development, critical thinking, concentration, and analytical skills. The St. Louis Chess Club welcomes chess lovers of any age and skill level to come and enjoy the game of chess. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. Championships and the American Cup, as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players, including the prestigious Sinkfield Cup, Cairns Cup, and many more. All tournaments can be streamed via our YouTube and Twitch channels that also include over 2,000 chess lectures for anyone to enjoy. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, merchandise discounts, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. Landmarked by the world's largest chess piece sitting outside our front door, the World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy, including various exhibitions, monthly concerts, and much more. Whether you are a beginner or a professional, there is something for everyone to learn here at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Enjoy free admission to our rotating exhibitions in our galleries and sign up for chess events, family-friendly programming, and art classes. And don't forget to stop by our award-winning gift shop, Q Boutique, and shop a wide selection of chess-related merchandise. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. Welcome back, everyone. We have a very exciting round going on. So let's take a look at the standings. Absolutely. A draw at the top between two of our tournament leaders that brought us to this situation, Nazi. Nepo and Gukesh still share in first with six points. And only Prague could catch them after today's round. We are expecting Prague, however, to draw. Then it, all eyes turn to the game. Uh, Prague is playing with Vidit. All eyes turn to the game of Fabi and Hikaru. We'll look at that shortly. Tell us about the standings in the ladies. In the ladies, uh, we don't have any results yet. So Tanjung is leading the tournament with six points, and half point, half point behind are two players, Karyachkina and Lei. Yeah, very tense games going on there, but we do have a number of results which has affected our predictions and our models. Let's take a look at uh, our updated predictions now that we know the two tournament leaders. Here they are. So both Yang and Gukesh are exceeding the expectations. Right, so before the tournament, Yang's expectation, according to our models, was that he would score seven and a half points. He's currently on schedule for eight. Gukesh was expected to perform at seven points. Now he's, he might do eight. Exactly. Prague is doing as expected, seven and a half. The player who really fell off the pace is Juan Fabiano, unfortunately for American fans. Our predictive model had him scoring eight and a half. And uh, yes, now he's at 50%, so that would be pretty tough to do. Exactly. <laughs> he needs to get on a winning streak. And Hikaru is also underperforming slightly. Exactly. He's, uh, so our predicted models, if everything else uh, holds up, uh, would be Jan and Gukesh playing a tiebreak. And by the way, we were right about 
uh, the Prague game, uh, no, no. It already ended officially in a draw. Exactly, already in a draw. So uh, again, uh, Prague will be a half a point away from our tournament leaders. Let's jump to the game of Ali Reza and Fabi for just a moment because we were very, very confused by the move that uh, Ali raised, right? yeah, which was f7, f5, but equally was Fabi because he now went into a tank spending well over 20 minutes before responding with en passant. I mean, because it's sort of like he could start to think about ideas of capturing, mm -hmm. uh, leaving, leaving the position alone, let's leave just the knight on g5. Uh, a G4 high yeah, drive. Five probably just came to him as a shock. That's why. He yeah, <laughs> exactly. So and then after trade trades, C2, C4, he basically says, "Okay, I've got an outpost. Let me uh, reinforce the outpost, and you can't move your king because the pawn on E7 is under mm -hmm. attack." Well, Ali Reza continues to surprise King to G7, inviting White uh, Miro, uh, inviting uh, Fabi to capture the pawn which he has just played. Will that bring the American an advantage? Uh, well, it does look like it promises some advantage. Yes, after f5, ef6, as you've pointed out, wasn't, or rather gf6 wasn't the strongest, ef6 should have been played, but still, roughly equal king f7 was so, more to the point, right. okay, opting for pretty much the same setup except that white can take on e7. Right. And it would look that white well, might be winning after knight e4, but somehow all the tactics work for black. Like if you try to take, it's nothing, king e3, I was thinking. But then, yeah, like rook e8, and it's black who is winning, because <laughs> when you take on c6, black does not recapture, but he has an He's intermediate, intermediate knight g3 check, and well, uh, right, so after knight e4, what white has to do is to go king d1. I've got a fork He's on the rook. Slightly more yeah, has slightly more pleasant position. Now, rook to e8, for instance, would be clearly in white's favor, and bishop d3 or f3, I wasn't sure, d3, and then you target you this guy. Yeah. Uh, right, but black has, once again, has to be very inventive, <laughs> has knight to g3, then if you take c8, black captures f1. I'm a so pawn it's a grabber. Lot of, and how do you want to grab the grab pawn? Grab the rook. Uh, grab the rook, but then grab yeah, black the captures, grab the knight, grab the rook pawn. takes, and grab the pawn. I think we are running into something. Yes, rook to f8, and this oh, there's g5 being, I'm in. guessing, yes, I'm g5. I still haven't Rook d4, g5, g3, right? Bishop no. d3. Bishop d3. Where? Uh, with the rook on d6. With the rook on d6, bishop d3. Yeah, but that will be one of those uh, similar to what Nepomnishi had with uh, yes. Nijat Abasov, yeah. right? So this will liquidate and maybe possibly your pawn up in the but very I end. will be a moral <laughs> victor. I will have Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You can brag about being, <laughs> being, a, pawn being a pawn up in the final position, but exactly. it will be a dead draw. Gotcha. According to the machine, once again, it's yeah. not that easy to judge very often these positions right. because you have, you know, a few different positions at the end of the forcing line. So this one's a pawn down, this one is a slightly more passive. Which one do you go for? King so d1 on the board, Mira. We're yep. expecting knight g3. Knight g3, the only move, by the way? Uh, yeah, anything else uh, just terrible, other than right? knight g3 is, well, rook c to e8 is 0.7 for white, almost a pawn up. Right. And there isn't a third move. So okay. it's between knight g3 or... So once again, knight g3. Knight to g3. Let's find some way of keeping the advantage if, because... If we can. Yeah, the computer captures this. Okay, captures this. And after rook c8, it actually doesn't take, but it instead goes like b4. Wow. And then it changes its mind again. So b4, uh, I can kind of, uh, you know, get behind. Point being, well, the bishop is very well placed on this long diagonal. Kick it off the diagonal. So interestingly, b5, yeah, the, the diagonal is long but not long enough, no. it turns out, right? right? So Kick if you let off. white 
Let, but yeah, like something like that, for instance, I'd be getting very optimistic G3, with white. G3, certainly. Maybe for A4. no reason, right? Could you take on A6, and this A6 and D6 pawns are both much weaker than white pawns? Right, yeah. and then maybe or, playing or just high. Or just play G2 and, you know, try to bring the king up once again. White doesn't have anything substantial, but it's much more pleasant to play with white. This would be a dream for Fabi because this is his kind of uh, technical expertise as well. Uh, hopefully he can get that type of advantage. I want to turn our attention to Hikaru's game, by the way, because that's heated up again. Uh, where, oh, yeah, yeah. Where Hikaru's actually <sighs> worse now. And, and he has uh, much less time on the clock. He has seven minutes left for seven moves. It was incredibly frustrating for ourselves as we watched the following unfold. Hikaru has played rook b8, and knight e7 invites Hikaru to win an exchange, bishop h7, shack, and there was a lot of complications that weren't terribly unfavorable for black. Uh, after the... If you stop from this position, Hikaru's played rook b8, and his very next move, he retreated his rook. Yeah. Losing time, losing very important precious tempi, and as a result, you're now about to tell me that Hikaru stands worse? Yes, he does, because in the last seven moves or so, his pieces moved all back, while right. Black improved the position significantly. Wow. Uh, this is stunning reversal. But and again, now, I'm just seeing timid play. Now Black can push h4. h4. <laughs> yeah. I was actually uh, worried a little bit there too about rook e8 mm -hmm. and getting the queen, uh, pardon me, rook e8. Um, the queen has to keep I an eye on... I think rook e8, maybe white needs to go right back rook b8. Rook e8, rook b8. Yeah. That's kind <laughs> of fun. Okay. Uh, because... Uh, well, because if we move queen d2, there's rook e2 coming, and that uh, looks bingo. very unpleasant. That, right. And, but you also mentioned, Nasi, h4, follow up your yeah. thought process here. You just want to... Well, I'm limiting your pieces more, both bishop and the knight. No, uh, you, you take have to over watch out the, for the g... h3s at some point. Yeah. yeah, you took over the g3 square, and like you say, you know, you can maybe h3 on a good mm -hmm. day catch... Uh, white on white squares. We're witnessing a very strange phenom here of Hikaru playing uh, exceptionally timidly and even slowly. Um, the games that Hikaru has really performed very well at, he's usually 30 minutes up on the clock. And Miro, you're taking us back several moves Absolutely. Ago. Is it possible that yesterday's loss is affecting his confidence today? Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, everybody gets impacted after a loss. Uh, oh, you're, you're going to make a nice point for us. Uh, I don't know if it's a nice point. I think it's an illustration to the point Nazi was making. That uh, So that was the position where we were looking for the straightforward rook b8. He went rook b7. And then uh, seven, no, seven, eight moves later. So just pay attention to the white pieces. Right. So I'll be so, I'll be going back and forth, yes, yeah, sir, and dear viewers. So this is what it was. Rook on B1, Bishop <laughs> Absolutely. On C2, so, so they, they didn't on change F1. one. But look at all the black pieces. They're mm -hmm. still on right. first rank. Yep. And then something like that. Bishop H2. We didn't do much. Black yeah. improved. He's also to move. Right. And, and this inclusion of g5, h5, if black was not forced to take on g5, then once again it's in black's favor. So rook e8 was played and queen d2. And I have to say, it's getting worse and worse. So he for didn't Hikaru. play rook b8. It's getting worse we and worse discussing. for Hikaru. It wasn't, yeah. you know, it was an interesting moment here because you would almost think like, Black is getting somewhere by force. Mm -hmm. But in a way, it could be this situation where, so kind of explaining why h4 is so good, because I originally, I yeah, thought just go bishop f5, that's very nice. Yeah, get, get rid but of But then you bishop. trade, and white gets rook, rook b5, gets the square on b5, because the queen leaves. After h4, strangely, it's not easy to make a move with white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you do, there is always something for black. Like, Rook b8, yes, okay, you can do. But then again, pawn on h4 would be better than pawn on h4. After rook e8, yes, rook b8 was uh, pretty much the only move. 
Because Queen D2, what Hikaru has done, I'm not sure what does it mean. So after Rook E2... Rook B8 check has been played. King H7 has been played. And Queen C1. And then, because our Queen is hanging, he's played <laughs> Queen to C1, offering up a C3 pawn, but he's got a cheapo. Bishop takes G6. Right. Discover Nijad check. played Queen E7. Queen I don't know why Nijad is blitzing, because he has 18 minutes. And Queen E7... Well, well, Queen E7 isn't Queen, the isn't the good move. Queen E7. Wait a minute. Isn't he threatening Rook E1 and Queen E2? I mean, he's got an idea. Might be a mistake. Right. Oh, he's got a powerful looking idea. By the way, why is he playing so quickly? He does have 17 yeah. minutes, right? Maybe he's trying to put moves? pressure on Hikaru, but there's only four moves left, and Hikaru has seven minutes. Okay. Well, uh, Black might be worried about his A3 pawn. Black might be thinking. Bishop takes g6 check, and queen takes a3 is on my opponent's agenda. I'm going to stop him. I'm going to defend the pawn on e7. Aren't I brilliant? Why isn't this move brilliant? Uh, for, the, for, the only reason, for the only reason of bishop e5. Otherwise, bishop yeah, black e5. would have been winning, but bishop e5 is super strong. Okay, so bishop e5 cuts the connection between queen and rook. It puts my bishop in a good place, but wait a minute. What's going on? Help me out Is wife threatening something? I was about to say. Uh, bishop takes c3, bishop takes g6, check, followed by queen takes c3. I do understand that one. Mm -hmm. Now... But what if we play, let's say, h4? Right. Like, aren't my pieces all really good? You know what? White might be able to play f4, f5, as crazy as that looks. Say H4. what? Really? f4? Yeah. Wow. Or ninety. Well, can't I play knight e? Ninety-three looks good too. Jesus, use I can use the f four square, but for the queen, guys. Oh, queen for the f4. queen. Queen f four. Yeah, that's the problem with h four. Originally, uh -huh. queen f four is not such a brilliant idea, but because when you the, play h four, and the this pawn is, is hanging. Uh, defended. Yeah. Okay. No, the bishop is hanging. So hold on. So now we start to understand that the queen on e seven isn't any great shakes. Uh, a move that I'd really like to play, funnily enough, is bishop f5, especially with my rook on e2. And Hikaru has played bishop e5. He played bishop mm -hmm. e5. Okay. He's By coming the way, back. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me the, the move count after. This is move 37. So, so three time trouble. Five minutes to make three moves. Uh, okay, that's not any It's trouble. not terrible because but White's... But the position is complex. It's a very... Yeah. Uh, strange position. Now it's harder to play for black. So, wow, things turned around so quickly. <laughs> yeah, white's they objectively do. better. They do. White's objectively better. And by the way, your H4 move, well, looks like the strongest. Just then a second. Then, then, yeah, then hold on, mm -hmm. hold on. What's going on? I, I'm still coming to grips with the position. Uh, let me, again, play a devil's advocate here. Uh, my bishop on a5, even though it is pressing against c3, that's well defended. Let me go after a different pawn. Bishop to d8. Uh, Miro, is bishop d8 completely crazy? Uh, let me find out. I want to take a pawn. It's not in the top three choices, so I presume it's not not great. Uh, well, it would have been, interestingly, Yasser's suggestion would have been a good move if not for knight g3. And you know what, guys? Uh, I suspect that in this position, there's a lot of tempting options mm -hmm. for both white and black. And very often, the, refuta uh, the refutation would be not on the surface. That, that's the most dangerous positions to have to play, and especially in a time trouble. Well, it's easier, you know, to find something if it's the only move, right? And, and especially the better you become as the player, because at some point in your career, they say, okay, you have to defend with only moves, it's very hard. Now, what's harder than this is that you have a, seemingly have a lot of moves and none of them work <laughs> in a tricky way. So anyway, back to, back to reality. Over here, it turns out, yeah, queen e7 is bad because of bishop e5. Instead, bishop to c7 was playable and would have been good for black nonetheless. So white perhaps has to trade, queen c7, and then once again, this rook always runs into some sort of, some sort of ideas. 
And if you go, if you persist on the eighth rank, then this is the moment you go, queen e7. And the big difference would be we would not have, as black, would not have the stupid bishop on a5. Not so stupid, but arguably worse than white bishop. Right. And there is no bishop e5 move. So mm. queen e7, black would be almost winning. Yeah. Wow. Because then that rook e1 and queen rook e1 is, is, is a big threat. Is a huge yeah. threat. Rook e1 is a big threat. Yeah, Ninja just played too fast and missed bishop e5. The lesson yeah. we learn over and over, yeah. don't rush. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Like the, he found something which seemed very appealing. Right. And he was the one with what, with like 25 minutes. He played queen e7 fast mm -hmm. to start thinking no. the moment is already too late. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, bishop e5, and again, when the bishop was on h2, Miro, just for our audiences, uh, uh, bishop c7, would be a really, really fine move because rook b7, again, when the bishop is on h2, I get to take with check. Right. And then I can take the rook. Mm -hmm. Now, however, I can't take with check. And if I have to sacrifice an exchange, rook takes e5, d takes e5, queen takes e5, I feel like I'm not coming up with sufficient compensation. No, I don't have in this is case. defending the king and. Precisely. Yeah. I can play like queen to d2. You only have uh, one pawn for the exchange, and that's insufficient. The strange part is, like, again, uh, I, I do this all the time. I ask my pieces, like everybody, every. <laughs> it's sort of like, what piece can I improve, and how should I improve it? Um, I'm thinking the bishop on g4 is fine. Knight on g6 is in a... In a a absolute pin. I can't move mm -hmm. it. My queen on e7. If I go back Hard to, to d7, it. yeah, and playing for bishop f5. Um, so it's the bishop on a5, right? Yes. So we need to move. That's why I came up with bishop d8, and that was when I got surprised by knight to g3. And suddenly it's sort of like, you're welcome to feast mm -hmm. on this pawn, but I'm going to take this rook. Uh, with so after bishop e5, knight g3 is already a threat, right? Trapping exactly, the rook. Exactly, trapping the rook. And that's why so Nijat makes... just stopped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. So h4 makes sense then. Black needs to play that move to just avoid losing the exchange. Except h4 runs into knight e3. And now, or no, queen f4. This is where, mm -hmm. uh, apologies, this is apologies to Miro. I mean, he already told me the move queen f4 suddenly becomes uh, very strong now that yeah. you played h5, h4. I guess I can take on c2. Take on queen c2. So at least I don't get checkmated. <laughs> well, 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 funny that you should mention that. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Uh, queen h5 is on, on the agenda. And that's Bishop d8 on the Bishop to d8. Maybe? Attacking g5. Uh, have fun. King G. <laughs> no more attacks on. Uh, this feels like it's gone wrong, right? Yeah, for sure. Knight comes in, and this looks. Yeah, it's something. So just much better for White. Something just. I think he kind of just got lucky because he had such a nice position earlier, missed the G5 opportunity. Absolutely. He moved the pieces all back. And then. The wars, and and now, then Bingo, okay. he just, he got a chance with bishop to e5, and it seems to be, Miro, it seems to be working. Uh, what can I say? Any victory at this moment will be, will, will, will be more than uh, 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 happy. Yeah, right, you are. That's, I think that's something that we, we were discussing off air, that, well, up to this point, Hikaru, the games he won, he was quite convincing right. against Fabi, against yeah, what other game he won. Uh, anyway, and sometimes one needs, you know, guys, like it's a very tough tournament with everyone knows how to play chess, everyone has like his up or down moments. So in order to perform well, I think once in a tournament, you really need a lucky result. Exactly. So if this happens, if Hikaru wins, and yeah, after, say, 20 moves, we would say, yeah, it's absolutely deserved, <laughs> then mm -hmm. it uh, turned upside down. If, he, if it turns upside down once again, 
Right, maybe that's uh, what you would call tournament luck. It's still not easy after h4, I have to point out, because... Uh, Queen f4. Yeah, a lot, of, lot of moves, knight e3 is there, so on and so forth. Queen f4, the... That's kind of convincing. The most straightforward thing. Rook takes, queen takes. That's a, that's a serious threat. <laughs> right. So bishop to d8. Required. Queen h5, very tempting. And now we said, like, no, the knight joins. Right. Not really. Not really. Ah. So all nice and clear and everything. And the only move to keep the advantage would be back to f3. So once again, if you don't calculate all that, and Sorry, Miro, what stage if I go queen d7? Lucky for, wait a second, lucky for Hikaru, it's move 41. Okay. Mm. Right, so, so he has more chances to find it. If you go queen d7, I go here. So, no, not yes. I go here. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't go for actually. this line, but computer says, like, you go here, and that's, that's a fine tactical point, of course, mm -hmm. yeah? Otherwise, you're absolutely right, Nazi. But that, that's, again, that's reflecting on our conversations. There's so many attractive moves for both sides. And very often they would have only one tactical, either justification or contrary, only one refutation. So it might as well be that, like, white doesn't go for this line because he doesn't see queen f3. Or right. black doesn't go for this line because he sees queen f3 and says, no, I'm lost. Mm -hmm. Or white doesn't go for this line because he says queen d7 doesn't see queen, queen h3. So it's very, very hard to tell. And once we again... you have a move. Once again, lucky for Hikaru, this would be... Move his move 40 would be queen h5 check, and then he has extra half an hour and, you know... To think about but it. Nijet yep. played queen e6. Queen e6 uh, in response. Computer's giving this a big, fat, orange question mark. And not surprisingly... Because of knight e3. e3. Yeah, so that, that's so yet not another Not knight e3, mistake. we're not going for the exchange. <laughs> well, it's sort of like one of those situations where the rook is still trapped. Right? But I would like to take that. <laughs> You'd like to take the rook. So knight g3, why haven't we rejected the uh, desirable knight g3? Rook e5, maybe? Rook e5. Rook e5. Take back. And then we take, now that's a pawn. That is a, an exchange, uh, pardon me, that is a rook hanging, and mm -hmm. we're threatening bishop takes c3. This looks... Reasonable. Knight e3, on the other hand, does not blunder the c3 pawn. As I keep pointing out, bishop takes g6, comes with a check, and then we get to recapture. Knight e3. So what if I... Never mind. There's nothing I can do. I know. It's sort of like, okay... Everything's pinned. Yeah, I mean, F... Well, I don't know if f3 is on my And Hikaru, li unfortunately, listened to me and went knight g3. Knight g3, mm -hmm. it, forcing Nijat to give up the exchange. Forcing rook takes e5. Mm -hmm. But now the question is, let's, let's assess uh, who has judged this better, Miro. Uh, first impressions, I'm kind of happy with black. Uh, yeah, it feels like black has very serious compensation in this right. case if he captures on e5, of course. And right. Again, computer's line is rook to b5. Bishop takes c3, and then the only move which gives advantage is queen e3, which is, once again, quite counterintuitive. Right. And I'm not convinced that even in the end of this line, which is like rook takes, pawn takes, and d4, if white's advantage is sufficient to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, white is an exchange up for a pawn, but, yeah, you know, quite a few simplifications happen. The king is not yet, uh, well, it's actually two pawns, I just come to realize. Yeah. It's two pawns, right? It's two uh, pawns. It's a little bit uncomfortable kind of king-knight pin over there, so maybe right. that's why white's better, but yeah. It's a very right. tricky, well, queen right. takes e5, yep, we've gotten right. there. By the way, uh, so the following your analysis up to rook d5, uh, Ikaro is yet to play rook b5, by the way. Bishop takes how c3, many rooks, queen... How many moves has that rook made on the b-file? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it feels like a yo-yo uh, up and down the b-file. I'm not 100% sure I like the move queen e3. Uh, I do like defending good pawns, and that is a gorgeous pawn on d4. Bishop e6? Uh, I've got two pawns and a oh, bishop. Really? for the this. exchange. Bishop e6, I was going to suggest. I have a feeling there is something wrong with this. Knight h5? Knight e2? 
92. <laughs> Again, don't ask me why, but 92 and 92 of 4, right? Ah, this I was going to so plant this my bishop pin, This pin is still very, very unpleasant, right? So wow. again, we are talking about this position, which Correct. is quite possible to happen in the game. And very then Yasa likely. was trying to go bishop e6, which would make a lot of sense defending the pawn. Knight e2. But white has some very unexpected tactics. So it goes knight e2, attacks the bishop. And if, say, bishop was to Which go, is what I wanted, to, go course, to b2, to and you would say, like, everything is stable and right. nice and everything. Ah, and even that F4. takes takes, and not knight f4, but just f4 and f5 and <laughs> winning material. That king on h7 <laughs> is really... It's crazy, and even, you know, Aww. even with the exchange of queens, it's full of tactics, this position. So you can't Jeez. possibly stop and say, okay, I'm satisfied. Right. This is, I don't know, pawn up or exchange for the pawn and, and I will play it. No, you have to calculate third and third on to make right sure now, that you're not missing. Hikaru is on his 40th move. So and he's going to use his remaining time, mid and a half, to find rook b5, which right. is the best move. For sure. For sure. Let's leave this one alone as the players do reach the time control. Troll. We are expecting that after rook b5, queen e3, Hikaru will enjoy an advantage. How big an advantage, we're not sure. And let's jump to the game of Fabi. Over to you, Miro. How is the game e unfolded? Yeah. I'm trying to find the, the exact we're, we're moment we left it, right? Yeah. So after king d1, yeah, that, yes. was, that was a big discussion. Like, will he find knight g3 or not? With this player, you don't have to doubt. Of course, he found. Uh, so knight g3, rook e1 was Fabi's choice, knight f5, knight f5, pawn takes. And then once again, bishop d3, rook f8, rook d6. Looks like white's up a pawn because bishop g2, it's always rook g1. Right. Rook to f6, according to the machine, the only move which keeps, keeps it equal. And let's say if you trade go g3, black just goes h4. You've got to take... F4 is weak, Good, yeah, the yeah. king will be cut, cut off on the first rank, you can go rook h2. Yeah, so despite white having a, an extra pawn in this position, computer evaluates it as equal. So Fabi, quite clever, tries, yeah. Yeah, tries it with c5, so in case of a trade, he will have this far advanced past pawn. And this is the moment where Ali Reza, I think he's getting ambitious, and at the same time it proves to be a mistake. So h5, h4. The okay. point of this move is easily understandable, right? Ooh, so you could weakness. not you could not take ups pardon me, where's the position? Yep. Yeah. You could not take g2 immediately because of rook g1 and the pin. So h4 creates this threat, but right. also kind of this pawn, if even if not taken immediately, it's not running away anymore. So it's kind of fixed on g2. But there is a, once again tactical justification why this is not very good. Rook e7. King g6 and rook to e5. And now bishop f the rook spin, so bishop f5 is threatening. And if we check something like this, because this, this is what kind of I'm not convinced with. So if black wow. captures, if black captures g2, there is bishop f5, check. king somewhere. D pawn's promoting some. And d7, yeah. <laughs> d7, and, and this right? d7 and the d pawn is so powerful that well. You know what, like bishop on g2 and pawn on h4, when I, whenever I see this and I imagine this pawn going to h3, h2, and this looks scary because black is almost like promoted. Mm -hmm. In fact, it never happens, right? h3, white can, white can go d8. Oh, oh, wait a second. Let's try h3. Uh, rook e8. Rook, rook e8. Very brutal. very brutal. With check. Very brutal. And also, I'll point out that both players under three minutes for Whoa. next eight moves. It's a huge time trouble. Yep. Okay, what does it mean? That I have to play rook h5? Uh, Defending f5? Well, the best, once again, if, if we only listen to, to the engine, to the engine okay. is to take, and then it, it's uncertain. King f6, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So takes on d6. Bishop d7, I can get behind. Okay, bishop d7 guarding. We do have a move on the board. Uh, and that is play. rook h5, which I thought was a very human move, uh, which was played. Rook h5. Let me just... Uh, 
update but my board. According to the engine, it's a bad move. I see a <laughs> it's a bad move, and <laughs> the refutation for this is once again not easy to find, but it's rook d8. And both players playing with three minutes for the next eight moves. Right. Uh, again, we understand what Ali Reza is up to. He's he's put his pawn on h4 purposefully so that this g2 pawn is a long-term weakness, and he's hoping to provoke bishop f1 and to drive white's bishop into passivity. That's probably what You've I would play. You've just played... <laughs> yeah. Because f1 looks very logical. Uh, right. Rook, rook to d8 uh, threatens, again, and defense, we have bishop tactically. bishop f1 Oof. on the board. Okay, Fabi that was, played bishop f1. So Fabi was the first to blink. I mean, essentially... But at the end of the day, he's still got the extra pawn. Wait a minute. What now black can take on d6 and go king f6. Okay, okay, I get that. I hear you. Takes, takes. But he can come back, right? Bishop c4. Well, if you don't mind, I, I'm, I'm a pawn grabber, and I like... <laughs> Keeping this. your pawns? Yeah, I like to play king f2 followed by bishop to d3. Are you maybe losing your d6 pawn? Probably well, I am. But you will win f5, right? I hope so. <laughs> I hope I will win f5. Uh, king e1, uh, Miro, after these trades, trades, king e1, uh, again, the times? Uh, 1 minute 50 seconds for Firuja. Firuja. 2.45 for Fabi. How many moves to play? Seven moves to play. Ooh, it's getting tense. Uh -huh. Tense it's in the playing ten. hall. King e1 is quite a serious try. And black would have to find... Well, rook h8 is not so bad, but black black's best reaction to king e1 is h3. Wow. h3, g takes rook h4 going after a four pawn. But this is missable. Easily, because yep. you, you, you give up what you've been attempting to do all along, which is to, 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 to make me keep a pawn on g2. Uh, by the way, do we, we do have rook yep. takes d6, the trade d6, happened. d6 on the board. H5, eight, H4, H3. H8 instead of king f6. Exactly. I was going to say that the move H3 is probably a very, very good move, but it just doesn't connect Absolutely. with what uh, uh, Ali Reza's last few moves have been. But uh, now Fabi can play bishop d3. Uh, if, I, if I pause for king f2, I'm too slow, right? Then you go rook to d8. So bishop to we d3. We don't have this position. King f6 didn't happen, so we don't have king f6. Oh, king excuse d1. me. Uh, pardon me. Immediately pardon me. rook h8. Immediately wow. rook h8. And Fabi just played rook e6, which looks like a mistake. King f7. They're both making mistakes, but let's not no. forget there is no increment less than a minute for Ali Reza, so that, that might be more important of a factor. Mm -hmm. King f7, and that really invites bishop c4 setting up a discover check, doesn't it? Do we it? have to move the king again after bishop c4, go king g7? Okay. Then why did I play king yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should ask. Oh, uh, because now g2 pawn is hanging again after you move the bishop. So king g7 mm -hmm. and you're saying, aren't I brilliant? <laughs> uh, I'm hanging. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so maybe he's trapping So Firuja has 56 seconds for five moves. And That's we need an half time. for Fabi. Bishop c4. Bishop c4, bravo Fabi. Okay, king g7. Strongest move. And then you just go rook e2. And rook from d2 guards both d6 and g2, so you'd be a pawn up at the end of all this. Which is my favorite living condition. <laughs> <laughs> Can he play rook d8 here instead of moving the king? Because you have discovery checks, but I don't c4, see a right? winning discovery check. Uh huh. And he played rook d8. Mm. He, wow. Basically, just throws down the gauntlet. Do your worst. Uh, you only have a discover check. But the engine says that king e1 now is winning for white, which Fabi just played. Well, by the way, I'm dreaming. I've been dreaming mm -hmm. ever since you've artificially isolated my g2 pawn. I've been dreaming of the possibility of playing king f2. And then with my rook on e6 and my bishop on c4 and such a power. Oh, 12 seconds for 12 seconds for, 12 seconds for how many moves Three left? Three moves. Three. He's not going to physically be able to do it. He just made a move. Eight seconds left. King g7. He's got to make two moves. Physically difficult king f2. to make three moves. And he just made a move. A5. With Whatever a was second closer or two? to the clock. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> His next move is going to be B fight. He He's going to pre move. Moves to make. I just saw seven seconds. A bar out of the corner of my eye went up through the roof. What happened, Miro? Why it's completely yeah, finished. exactly. A three B five. The closest move to the clock was made on the board. A three B five. He has one more move to make. After this, that was move thirty nine. Yes. Okay, pause, 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 because this feels like white has everything. Everything. Bishop d3. Bishop then d3. Then we are going to pick up a five pawn. I like, your, I like the way you're thinking there, <laughs> Nazi. I love it. Bishop d3. That's a huge... 18 anything. seconds for five. Anything. anything. Bishop d3 is good. Bishop a2 is good. Bishop d3 on the board. Fabi got his 30 minutes. Two seconds. Bishop just played bishop d5, his last move. So five. the rich time control, but White's position looks completely winning. Wow. Rook seven check. Then pick up b5. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm assuming this this bishop ending is completely winning. Rook check, king uh, f6, bishop takes b5, rook takes d6, bishop rook to d7. I'm assuming that's completely winning. It has because, to be, right? Yeah, I mean, that pawn's on a light square, and I do have a candidate. You don't have a5, a4, uh, a candidate past pawn. So I'm assuming that's yeah. done and dusted. I'll just check. Yeah, wow. is completely winning. And Good news. Uh, that time trouble, that both, just... <laughs> right now, both very Icaro nervous. and Fabi are looking very good. But their I positions forgot are both about winning. Icaro's game. Let's, <laughs> let's go there. Uh, again, a time control has been reached mm -hmm. between Fabi and Ali Reza. And he left eight seconds for three moves. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, physically, it becomes uh, a challenge. The good thing he's a good bullet player. So he managed. But, you know, it's one thing online because you've got Trug your mouse and everything and you can pre-move it's mm -hmm. another thing in, in in reality and the players have followed your main line Miro including queen takes e3 and d4 and d4 and the players have caught up with king f1 have they reached time control yes sure. they're on move 44 and the engines assessment at this moment better for white Better. One point something, one point four. Just, so apparently, if you look at it, you can highlight on your board. Yes, yeah, sure. so like the whole setup, knight on g6, king h7. It's very Terrible. tough to kind of un unravel. To break you, you, the desire. Yeah, the king moment G8. you go to the eighth rank, it's a check, and you'll have to go back. Right. Which gives White additional time to. Right. Don't know to do what, but <laughs> but to do something. Okay, so what I would really like to do if I was in black shoes is somehow trade these A pawns off because I figure if I can do that, uh, how should I go about doing that? Um, where how am I could moving we my bishop? possibly trade those pawns? <laughs> <laughs> One can be a dreamer. <laughs> <Look. laughs> I mean, I, don't let the. the, the, the don't. Uh, don't don't uh, bother me with the details. I mean, I, I just I'm big picture guy. You yeah. know, like uh, the big picture is. So you want to okay, I go bishop b two. Okay. Okay. And then you want bishop b six c three or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, <laughs> that's all you needed. Just 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 to know what uh, you're 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 searching for. Bishop b two. How does it go? Knight to f five is what computer's doing. Knight to f five. Right and. That does free Problems. up my knight. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I'm still scared to move it. Okay, yeah, like, we're not okay. that scared. One of the lines, knight to e5, knight to e3, okay. g6. Yes, which was Knight a takes bishop, mm -hmm. knight. knight takes knight, I guess. Okay. And this, computer has this better for white. Okay, th that's questionable, I agree. Not that it can be possibly be worse for white, but, but is it enough? Right. Yeah, white that's is the strongest side here, but isn't it some sort of a fortress? We exactly. wouldn't know. Right. 
But that's a dream thought, at least, as the bishop is defending the knight, the knight is defending yeah. the pawn. And it's black, you probably put the knight on e5, right. and then just shuffle with the king and say, uh, uh, I have a fortress, I don't know how you break through. And I'm a happy camper. Bishop b2 is not on the board, but go ahead and break it. Besides knight f5, which again, it's kind yeah, of an encounter. There are, there are different tries, like knight. Yeah, but, but mostly it's, it's a knight move. Well, okay, you can go knight e4. Okay. Pretending that you are freeing black knight because now if black goes like there is a little double check on f6. Ouch. Which in connection with rook b8, very next move, happens to be a checkmate. Right. But yeah, but black doesn't have to be so naive anyway. Right. So after knight e4. After knight e4. Well, king g8 is what the a country? possible move. So I presume you want to go king f8 and kind of come out of this corner and if check king h7 then hasn't I, been I'm nine. not sure I'm not sure has, hasn't white just improved a lot a lot I mean this is the that's the issue I have with the computer in such positions because it changes you know there's so many options that even computer is not 100% certain what to do well here I will just argue that even though it appears that black has done nothing he's still in that massive pin of the bishop, he has put his bishop on e6. In the current position with the knight on g3, the h-pawn is hanging. So mm -hmm. in a certain way, I've tricked you into bringing your knight uh, to a gorgeous square d6. <laughs> <laughs> you must attack, you, you must, must attack. Bishop b2, uh, on, and uh, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye here. Uh, let's just, update please, on the ladies. In the latest section. The yes. Two ladies who are sharing in second place are playing each other, Karyachkin and Lei Tingzhi. And looks like Karyachkin is going down. I see, Ka I see Katya and Anna have drawn, drawn their game, their game. Mm -hmm. not unexpectedly, but you were about to tell me that... Uh, Lei Tingzhi is beating, looks like wow. a winning endgame for her. Wow, that's the black pieces. because when we left it, we had seen the move A5 and there was a little awkwardness in the situation for white, because the w white knight on a c8 seemed a little bit far from the action. Let's pick up where things happen. Check, f3. She found this queen g3 move, which forces the trade, and turns out the end game is just winning for black, because Not white's knight is out of play. Not surprisingly, uh, the knight is simply trapped on f8. This, uh, this bishop is making a Tsuji uh, from the game of Go, dominates the knight. The bishop on f8 controls e6. Um, and so white now, was forced to play e4. Now black can play, I really want to play bishop c8 to keep the knight. I agree. <laughs> but bishop e4 is actually better. Is it? Because yes. bishop c8 looks There's simple. There's d5 here. Aren't you going to pick up this guy? Like no, king, king g7, knight e6. I don't think that pawn end game is winning, actually. Really? That is. Because I have king g4, king f5 right in time, right? <laughs> I'm amazing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I won't be in the square mm -hmm. when I want to play. Okay, so that means, so just, sadly, I have pawn. to take a pawn. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not so free. Takes, takes. And f5 here. Not capturing on e5. Capturing on e5, I was right. hoping to rescue myself, even though I don't think uh, that is any good either. f5 looks very smart. Yeah. And with the results that we've had so far, let's just catch up on the women's standings. We've had one draw between Lahno and Muzichuk. So Tanjungi remains uh, as a leader with so six leader. points and uh, two players share in second, Karyachkina and Lei. If, and we do think uh, Alexandra is losing uh, to Lei, which will give her six and a half points. Mm -hmm. How is Tan doing in her game? Uh, it looked like a draw is short ended. Against? Against Humpy. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Well, King F is black to move, so it will be one, two, three, <laughs> one, one, two. One, two. Yeah. One, two, the old one, two, three, one, two. Okay. Uh, 
King F5. Let, let, let me go. King takes F5. King C4. King C4. King G5. Let me go over here nice. and slurp upon. B5. Yeah, this is tricky. B5, King H4. And I think you're just going to have go. to go Rook to D8. Yeah. King takes. I mean, here I feel like this, if these two pawns go far enough, then black can just sack the rook. Exactly, exactly. Tricky. So this is what you don't want to mm -hmm. see. Uh, again, I'm just going to uh, re refresh my board. This is the current position, b4. Uh, what was the last move? Yeah. b4. So there it is, king e5, b4. So king takes f5. And, uh, you know, Miro, this is really annoying because this might be one of those things where the computer is just kind of laughing at, uh, at the, the situation. But for us humans, we like to play black a lot. Mm -hmm. More pawns? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Correct. reason? Uh, King C4. King yeah, I'm G5. just looking at this line. Yeah, King G5 and, yeah, computer's not impressed, but then... Why not? Starts playing some weird moves here, like rook, I don't know, rook f8, for instance. Right. Ah, maybe, maybe it's not a weird move, maybe it's super clever move. So after this, okay. we go to f3, g5, we go, go to, to d3, d3, uh, to d3, and we wait, and we wait. And then when black creates the past pawn, Whichever he does, like G4, H -G yeah, G4, we take take, and that's the moment where we, we take, take on D6. And then we're happy. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, sack the rook here with right. the rook back. So the only possible question, I oh, know, rook B6, I thought rook B6, but then king B4, king A5 from exactly. the other side. It so, should be a draw still. So the key point is that after B4 in the current position, what we really want to do is we want to play a rook check and when the king is bring the rook back going to the h Which is a bit counterintuitive because we're ta taught that rook is better behind the pawns right so yeah. I, and i think it was king c4 by the way king c4 yeah it was king, king c4 first let 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 black commit her king to going to h4 and yeah a little bit counterintuitive mm -hmm. as you say because we're always told rook belongs behind mm -hmm. pass pawns, uh, rook f3. And so for Tan, uh, uh, let's have a look at this young lady. How she, is she? She once won the world championship through the World Cup. Right. She was the knockout world champion winner. Right. Right. And then lost the match against Ju and Jun. Right. And uh, she's only, she's 32 years old. and. Uh, She's women's Grand Swiss runner-up. That's how she qualified to this event. Exactly, sporting the 25-21 rating and essentially been leading uh, from start till now, although she did have a hiccup uh, against uh, Lei. And what do you have? How is Alexandra's position? Yeah. I'm, I'm, she did play <laughs> bishop C8. I went back to this, uh, well, quite intriguing endgame, I have to say, between Goryachkin and Lia Chingye. Yeah. Because... You were absolutely right that this would win, and it's specifically f5. <laughs> Fe5 is also possible, but it's right. even with the help of computer, I'm not able to tell what's going on. Because the naive approach of like, I'll take your a4 doesn't really lead anywhere because when knight c4 and you win, knight win, knight win the pawn back. Yeah, but you could instead you could instead go b5, and I don't know what's that because. Mm. White, That's so fast. white stops the pawn on a2 by going knight b3, so knight right. belongs in the corner. White has one passed pawn here, potentially other pawns pawn here. <laughs> so black, black's never in danger, right. but that maximum I can promise. So she went to bishop c8, uh, d5, king g7, knight e6, right you are, capturing on e6, might have been losing for black. <laughs> Because of g3 and h4. Yeah, so king f7, and now, if I got it right, so oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Check, check, king, king f7. f7, if I got it right, white should be saving or having good chances if he identifies, or she identifies, that king f2, g3, h4 is actually what you have to do. So you're not scared of... The That's what the computer has to tell me. Yeah. Wow. You are I'm not scared. scared of this. 
This is You're still not scared of this because I'm super surprised. <laughs> not even G3, but you just you just run here. It's like I don't know anything about chess. I know. I'm gonna absolutely. I, I, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm so uh, surprised. Send uh, my grandmaster title back to, uh, to the theater. So As uh, we go super. on a, a break, uh, we just want to tell you about. Uh, uh, what Jeannie Sinkfield has done, uh, she has created a little program booklet called Read and Write Chess. She got tired of being with her husband with all of the chess players talking, Bishop takes F3 and Queen takes F3. She was out of her depth. So she said, you know what, I'm going to make it easy for folks. And uh, uh, Jeannie uh, decided to do the Learn to Read and Write Chess. And it is an available, I know this, because uh, she gets everybody to translate it in 14 different languages. And you can download your copy at the uh, stlouischessclub.org site and uh, learn to read and write chess with Dr. Jeannie Karen Singfield. As we take a break, let's go over to Toronto with a special guest. Did you do it? We are here with uh, Grand Chess Tour Executive Director and also Vice President of FIDE, Michael Khodorkovsky. Michael, what brought you here? Welcome to, the, to our presenter. Uh, thank you, uh, first of all, for having me. Um, second of all, I came here for the FIDE Council's meeting that took place today. And of course, to see some games because it's a big event, one of the most uh, important events of the year. And of course, it's uh, interesting to see how uh, players compete for to be a challenger for the World Championship title. Exactly, and uh, by the way, seven out of eight players are participants of Grand Chess Tour. What do you think about it? Do you feel that we have the best players? Uh, well, of course, because seven out of eight, uh, I can say that six out of eight and six out of seven that participate uh, uh, at the Grand Chess Tour, definitely one of them will become a challenger for the World Championship. And besides that, at the Grand Chess Tour, we have uh, two champions, world champions, who will participate as wild cards, as Magnus Carlsen and Dean Gliren. Yes, he will play in Singful Cup, right? Correct, Dean? correct. Magnus will be playing uh, as a wild card in two Rapid and Blitz events in Warsaw mm -hmm. and Zagreb. And Dean Gliren will play the classical event at the Singful Club, last leg of the Grand Chess Tour. And uh, today is the birthday of a legend, 13th world champion, Gary Kasparov. Of course, I should ask you, um, first of all, how whom Gary is rooting for, I mean, is he following the event and uh, um, what can we wish for him? Well, he is definitely watching. Uh, I spoke to him half an hour ago and congratulated him with his birthday. And he asked me when the round starts. I said like half an hour since we spoke. And I told him that I'm just going to, to see the games. So, but he did not reveal who is his favorite or who, whom he is rooting for. I believe that he will tell this afterwards. Okay, we will definitely ask him when we have this chance. Thank you, Michael, for being here with us today. Enjoy the tournament and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The stages are set, the players are primed, the best of the best are ready to face off in the 2024 Grand Chess Tour. The top players in the world prepare to battle across four countries for a $1.5 million prize fund. Everything starts in Warsaw with the Superbet Rapid and Blitz Poland, then off to Bucharest for the Superbet Chess Classic Romania. The players then travel to Zagreb for the Super United Rapid and Blitz Croatia. The tour concludes with back-to-back -back events in St. Louis, Missouri, the chess capital of America for the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz and the Sinkfield Cup. Nine players will go in, but only one can be crowned champion. Who is prepared to make history? Get ready for the return of the Grand Chess Tour.
The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. championships as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The St. Louis Chess Club Scholastic Program brings the educational value of chess to kids and schools across the St. Louis area. Active in over 100 schools throughout the St. Louis city and county, the St. Louis Chess Club has been able to reach over 85,000 students in both in-school and after-school programs. We view chess as a valuable educational tool. Learn more about our scholastic programming by visiting stlouischessclub.org education. In the world of collegiate chess, there is no team rising quite like the one at the University of Missouri. The team has brought home title after title, including the 2024 Pan American Intercollegiate Championship, the first time ever in school history. Guided by their head coach, Christian Carilla, there is no stopping the Tigers. Respect, responsibility, discovery, excellence. University of Missouri. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. The World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. St. Louis, the chess capital of the United States. It also plays host to an award-winning shop dedicated to chess merchandise, all occasion gifts, and plenty more. At Q Boutique, you can shop both in-store and online. From quirky greeting cards to luxury chess sets, there is something for everyone at Q Boutique. Enjoy a shopping experience like no other. Make sure to check out QBoutiqueSTL.com for a wide variety of gifts for everyone to enjoy. At St. Louis University, chess and success go hand in hand. Founded in 2016, the St. Louis University chess team has risen to become recognized as one of the best in the nation, bringing home multiple titles, including the national championship in 2022. With members from nine countries and led by grandmasters Varuj Nakobian and Darius Fierks, the future is bright for the SLU chess team. Higher purpose, greater good. St. Louis University. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States and is among the best in the world. Thanks to co-founders Dr. Jeannie Cairn Sinkfield and Rex Sinkfield, the St. Louis Chess Club is a non-profit organization committed to promoting the game of chess locally and internationally. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area, promoting cognitive development, critical thinking, concentration, and analytical skills. The St. Louis Chess Club welcomes chess lovers of any age and skill level to come and enjoy the game of chess. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. Championships and the American Cup, as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players, including the prestigious Sinkfield Cup, Cairns Cup, and many more. All tournaments can be streamed via our YouTube and Twitch channels that also include over 2,000 chess lectures for anyone to enjoy. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, merchandise discounts, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? 
Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. Landmarked by the world's largest chess piece sitting outside our front door, the World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy, including various exhibitions, monthly concerts, and much more. Whether you are a beginner or a professional, there is something for everyone to learn here at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Enjoy free admission to our rotating exhibitions in our galleries and sign up for chess events, family-friendly programming, and art classes. And don't forget to stop by our award-winning gift shop, Q Boutique, and shop a wide selection of chess-related merchandise. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. Welcome back, everyone. We have some very exciting games going on, but first, let's take a look at our current standings. Absolutely. Jump right in and tell us where we stand. We had two draws. Yanni Pomni should drew his game against Gukesh, and Prague and Vidit also drew their game. Which allows the outsiders, in this case Fabi Hikaru, to potentially jump back into the tournament? Yes, potentially share third place with Prague. And tell us about the standings for the ladies. In the ladies, we've had one result so far. Lahno drew her game against Muzichuk. So nothing rem nothing has changed so far. Tanjung is still leading the tournament, and Koryachkina and Lei are fighting for the second. Absolutely. And as we, uh, we <laughs> as we see this uh, outside possibility mm -hmm. of a tie break, as two players tying for first, what will the tie breaks look like? In the past, they only use mathematical tie breaks. This is the first time it's going to be decided on the board at long last. You're like, Yahoo! <laughs> this is great. Right, so if two players are tied for first, there okay. will be a two-game rapid match. If they're still tied, then they'll have two-game blitz match. So two-game rapid match at game 50, plus 10 second bonus for each move made. And then if they're still tied, then they go to the blitz. What's three plus two? And, yeah, right? And if it's three or more? Then they'll have rapid round robin. At game 15 plus 10 seconds, and right? And if it's still tied, they'll have blitz round robin with three plus two. Wow, hopefully the rapids will eliminate a few of the players tied uh, at the top. Great. Well, first of all, kudos to FIDE for doing that because I really hated what happened in London in 2013 when Vladimir Kramnik and Magnus Carlsen tied for first and it was a mathematical mm -hmm. tie break. I think both players were just saying, let's decide it on the board. And uh, in this case, uh, Kramnik came up short on the mathematical formula. Let's jump to the game of Fabi and Ali Reza. When we left it, I thought it was done and dusted. Rook check, bishop back, bishop takes c4. It's very clear we simply want to play bishop c4, please take my my pawn, so I can play bishop c4 and get into a winning uh, king and pawn endgame. King f6, uh, annoying move. I'm assuming rook d7, uh, Miro, uh, just keeping uh, all the extra little units. Yeah, well, interesting. Yeah, I don't think there is anything wrong with rook d7. Uh, well, there is. Well, there's rook, rook b8, eight, and oh, I, no, would, I, was just I would to... think I would think a4, but right. then bishop e8, and guess what? I'm in still a, trying to preserve all my pawns. In a couple of moves, we went from being completely winning to what computer calls a draw, I'm sorry. Incredible. Equal. Equal. Incredible. But Fabi played rook c7, and looks like his idea is yeah. Rook yeah. to yeah. trade I the rooks. Wanted, I just wanted that's to rook trade six. rooks. That was what that's rook a, d7 was That's a was very good about. move. Rook c7. Uh, yep, yeah. rook c7 is the best, and the other because elegant d... way was to go bishop d7. Aha, uh -huh. rook, uh, uh, rook c7 was Fabi's move. Another way of playing. that would be Yas's move, preserving all the pawns. As uh, you yeah, said. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Was just and any rook move. Uh, we have rook d6, rook c6 on the board, so rooks are about to be traded. And king f6, just rook c7. Matter of technique. Exactly. Rook takes d6, rook c6 on the board, rook takes c6, bishop takes c6 has been played. Catching up with the players now, b4, and that's a solid victory 
for Fabi, a much, much, whoa, 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 whoa. I see that Ali Reza, every Great time bishop. I think, I was about to play B4, <laughs> completely overlooking Bishop B3 was no more B4. He doesn't make things easy. Like seriously, opponent. right? So if I just go King E3 and head towards the queen side, black will play King E6. King E3 head towards the king side. You know, the, the one thing annoys me is this pawn on h4 and this pawn on g2. What if I just I get rid of it? Uh, may oh, I, grossly, may please. I, I love your idea of getting rid of it, but maybe let's just eliminate it for free because you have, and it, it oh, is king counterintuitive, G1. <laughs> but you have king g1, right. h2, h3, and black has no way whatsoever to stop it. I much prefer. So you just go <laughs> after this pawn. I don't trade it, I win it. Yes. King uh, g1 to h2, h3, that is very convincing. Very nice resource. I like that. I like that best of all. King g1, king h2. Fabi in the driver's seat, certainly in this one. I wanted to go to uh, Hikaru, yeah, Hikaru. Uh, catch up on his game with Nijat. When we left it, we, kn like we knew it was still a little tricky. By looks the way... Like, looks like he's about to pick up the a3 pawn. Knight to e2. I understand that Hikaru didn't want to block the diagonal, a uh, much more human approach. 92, Bishop, and he's going after the a3 pawn, you were saying. It's uh, his move now, because black played king g8. King g8. So I think he can just pick up rook a3. Agreed. And then start pushing the a pawn. Uh-huh. I, I had put my bishop on b2 previously, and uh, with that missing a pawn, doesn't that just mean the the Apon Express uh, mural mm, is, is, is a coming? Very likely. Yeah. Very likely. Yes. Rook a3. Bishop, bishop to g5, g5 you would expect. Else? And then a check. Right. And once again, despite eliminating the g5 pawn, the whole setup is still quite awkward. Like you go knight f8, you have to spend a few moves to get out of that. Right. And then why just rushing? a4. Yeah. And yeah, looks looks like what's winning. Yeah, the A pawn uh, express. Yeah, is pretty like fast. looking at those lines, the evaluation grows in White's favor. That usually means that computer kind of calculates it further and finds out that yes, this pawn will cost will a cost beast. black a piece. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So both uh, Hikaru and Fabi seem to be winning. Fabi's game pretty much done. Right. Hikaru will have to do some technical work still. Right. Well, I must say, I mean, talk about a roller coaster ride for the players, for the commentators as well. I mean, I, I freely confess, I'm very, very depressed about yesterday's results uh, for the American players here in St. Louis. Folks are very proud of their chess history, being having hosted the very first World Chess Championship of 1886. I like to joke that Rex was on the appeals committee for that one. And they always dream of uh, returning the World Chess Championship, returning here to St. Louis. And obviously we would love to have a competitor in that event. Well, when when the Americans did so badly yesterday, it was sort of like, ah, oh, it was really, really depressing to see them both win today. However, I mean, that gets the juices flowing once again. Like, okay, come on guys, come on. They still have a lot of ground to make up. Uh, do, if you don't do mind, just tell us about the standings. Um, well, I, well, no, remember when Mira right. was telling us about the future rounds and, yeah. you know, like what we can expect. Again, both Ikaru and Fabi at this moment trail uh, by a point and a half our two tournament leaders who are already in the dugout, six. But if we assume that both players win their games today. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. They jump the trampoline. They, they jump to the third place, Sharon, alongside with Prague, and only half point behind leaders. And they, I believe they both have to still play Nepo, Nepo and, and Gukesh. So. so in a sense, they still have destiny Absolutely. in, in their, hands. their hands as uh, we'll look at those future, we'll peek ahead right. at the and future pairings. Tie breaks uh, look more and more realistic now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the, don't they? Uh, what have we got? 
Let's check uh, Fabi's game. Did he? He played Absolutely. Bishop D7, which Fabi's actually game. is very nice because it uh, doesn't allow Black King to move anywhere. Instead of King G1, right? He first King, played Bishop D7. I uh, the the maneuver. Oops, excuse me. Uh, let me just do that. Let me just repeat. Mm -hmm. uh, so he played the the maneuver King G1 to H2 to H3 is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is, you make that maneuver, but first tie Black's King down to the um, to defense. Bishop to d7, and again, king g1, king h2, this is very exciting for Fabi's fans as they can see mm -hmm. the end is nigh. And we've got those uh, next three rounds coming up, and to look ahead, just look at what we've got. Now this is round 12. Right, in round 12, Hikaru will be playing Firuja. Right. Fabiano will be playing Vidit. And Round. Nepo will be playing Prague. That's a huge game. Round 13. This is where it gets interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the rubber be... meets the road, as we say. Yes. Hikaru will be playing the tournament leader, Nepo. And Fabi will be playing Prague, who's currently sharing third. Exactly. Gukesh up against Ali Reza. We hope Ali Reza really comes swinging. And finally, Round 14 could be for all the marbles. Right, Hikaru will be playing Gukesh, who might still be in the first place. Right. And uh, Fabi will be playing Nepo. Who, who might <laughs> still be in the first place as well. Wow, okay, this is oh, that, that script writer's dream. Uh, very, very nice. And Miro, this uh, ending looks very, very done. Like, I just don't see anything that... Uh, that Ferruja, I mean, he's he, he had a lot of tricks, but not anymore. First, you got to play a4, right? I mean, just so that you can move your bishop, king, G1 and move the bishop. Yeah, but it's kind of a zero king. to play, right? Well, no, yeah, counterplay. No, yeah. After king, king h5, there is bishop e8 check, and we pick up that pawn. That is it. After that, you after got resignation. me. Yep, you got me on that one. Yeah, nothing uh, going on there. So it's all about Hikaru's position. If you don't mind, what have you got for us uh, after the rook takes a3? And it is the, the one that Express. we were looking at. Yeah. Yes. So after rook takes a3, bishop g5, check here a4. And yeah, just looking through. What's okay. the, I mean, what is what, the evaluation, uh, by the way? Plus three something. Plus yeah. three. I'm just looking at, you know, something, pardon me, human. Yes. So you want to give some checks, of you want to create, I don't know, some imbalances, and uh, one slight potential that I can think of that maybe, say, these pawns advance, and we sacrifice a piece for the pawn, which is like on a7, and right. try to make something out of it. Right. Right, so while it is winning, I believe, computer, there is no reason not to, there might still be some play involved, like, you know, like some checks and here and there, so Hikaru has to be a bit careful, okay. even though I don't see the real idea for black. So computer goes here and back, gives checks, prolongs the game, mm -hmm. but yeah, it seemingly can't really stop the pawn from advancing. Ad advancing. So I think white eventually wins. If, uh, yeah, if Hikaru won't do anything stupid, but in this position, it's already pretty straightforward if we have a... It's because good. of that awkward placement of the knight on f8 and the king. Oh, that, absolutely. Yeah. That's been the bane of the uh, problem. And over here, or rather, over here, he could have gone like, well, it was bishop, bishop c7, c but also in <laughs> some position, he could have gone bishop f5, Trade these guys off, right? And for next twenty moves, he wouldn't right. have a headache, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. And, and, but that's amazing how you could not kind of cannot recognize the position. It's completely different. Mm. But there is this one theme of white bishop on c2, pinning the knight, making it right. uncomfortable. And if we've right. seen many lines where the king was getting checkmated. Mm -hmm. So twenty plus moves after that, and it's the same theme that exactly. because of this pin. Black is lost. Yeah. Uh, apologies, I don't mean to compliment myself, but that move, Bishop F5, uh, I hate being in pins. I, I, I just feel like I'm tied up 
something is something is completely wrong. Whoa, 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 and whoa. Uh, the move, the move uh, bishop f5 would have been my first thought. F7, F5. F7, F5, if for whatever reason, computer increased it in White's favor. The evaluation is White. In White's really favor. didn't like that. I think that Black was just desperate at this, mo at this point. Right. Okay, let me uh, bring up uh, the game on my board again. I'm going to switch from um, Fabi's game to Hikaru's game. F7, F5. Okay, as we've been saying, you know, you've got to do something. I'm wondering if this doesn't allow me just to stop you completely from even playing h3. We were starting with h3 and maybe with but good do reason. Do we need to stop black from playing h3? We can just push a5? Yeah, well, no, I'm not saying that uh, uh, a5 for me is unstoppable. I just want to make sure that you don't get any play. <laughs> you know, like I want to take away all uh, your, your fun. Anything else, another move that I might find attractive here. I, I'm just I'm saying, you know, like, Maybe I can exploit um, the e6 square. I'm threatening to play knight to e6, but I'm also threatening maybe bishop f5. Bishop yes. f5. That looks like a double hit. I think white doesn't have a bad move in this position. So Trust me, I can find. Uh, <laughs> give, give me a chance. Give me a chance. Uh, you're probably forced to play f4. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, are you going to be able to sacrifice a piece? That might be bishop a, f6. Yeah, that might be a question that you can ask yourselves. Are you going to be able to sacrifice bishop f5? Everything's winning. Everything's winning. Yeah. This looks completely uh, great, actually, for Hikaru. Um, after the move f5, a5, you liked right uh, right away. Just just go ahead. Yeah. A5, A6, threatening rook, a, rook F8 and A7, yes. Chess is a simple game, right? <laughs> Very simple, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we ought to have that, Miro, there, we ought to have that for chess as well. I mean, uh, it, it's from the old uh, Soviet times, uh, that uh, football, soccer, it's a very simple game. 11 players get on the field uh, and uh, they... They push the ball around for 90 minutes and the Germans win. Yeah, and I, I don't think it was Soviet to be honest. I think it was like coming from, I thought possibly was... from British, but yeah, anyway, yeah, so the explanation what football is, right? A very yeah. simple game. Absolutely. <laughs> like, in the yeah, end, the Germans They kick win. the ball around and then Germans win at the end. Right, yeah. we ought to have something like that in chess. Absolutely. Chess is a simple game. You push the people uh, uh, and... Uh, yeah, we're just going to go to the Fabi game because we do expect that that game is going to come to uh, a finish. All Fabi needs to do is find the King G1 idea and then game will be over. He, he did I mean, play. I'm sure there's another way to win as well, but right. that's the quickest way to win with King For G1. For sure, yeah. And here we go. King G6 on the board. We are expecting uh, the mover, maneuver. King G1, King H2, King H3, and picking off this pawn on H4. I yeah, can't no. see any ideas for black to even delay this maneuver. Yeah, you almost think that there should be some kind of a stalemate stuff. Um, no. No ideas whatsoever. None. Uh, anytime I move my bishop, bishop c2, uh, before. immediately b4. So I was trying to play a4, but... And uh, Fabi played king g1, and of course. he did. <laughs> And time's not a factor for... They both have 13 minutes. They're in the second time control, king g1. And I played a4, king h2. I was just imagining... Okay, uh, let me play king h1. So I'm just imagining what's the worst thing I can do? Bishop, king, king, king. So I get losing here... Losing tempo on time, on yeah, purpose. Yeah, on purpose. And, and you're still winning. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So I was trying to find a way that I make a construction where there was even a chance. All black's three pawns are under attack. So, and black is in Tsuk Tsuk. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, all pawns, so there you go. Uh, nothing uh, in this one for Ali Reza. No, I think that, that, that's resignable. Right. Seriously, that's... Uh, I'm surprised it's still going on, to be honest. But right. He... 
Yeah. The, so lesson to be uh, learned from this is that in the end game, put your pawns on the opposite color of your bishop. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so E3, B2, and F4, very safe pawns. From White's perspective, absolutely. Yeah. Um, for Fabi, the, 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 well, today I saw some very, very strange, uh, timid play, I would call it, by Hikaru. He's going to get rewarded for his timid play. For Fabi, let's talk about Fabi's results so far. He comes into the tournament, he's the clear favorite. Right. Clear favorite. Rating-wise, he had a fabulous 2023. It's sort of like a, a second wind. He's ready to become challenger again. Mm -hmm. And kind of flattish. He, somehow he got to plus one, maybe deserve it or not. Then suddenly it was 50%. Yeah, he that definitely was a, had some chances in certain games that he missed. Right. And then that loss against Hikaru was very hard to explain. That was not Fabi playing. Exactly. But this win would be an amazing comeback. And this will be still, a good win. Like he's played and he well. he won the game. Yeah. It's officially over. Fabi is back in contention, okay. I want to say. I mean, you know, like. Strong. Uh, it's a half a point separating him and the two leaders, but this was a so much uh, needed uh, victory. Uh, let's just jump over to Hikaru's uh, game. Where's Hikaru? There you are. I think he, he played uh, knight d4. Your move. Knight d4, and I think this line was something we had on the board. Something similar is he can play king g2 to avoid any more checks, which he just did, and yeah, five's hanging, a pawn is, what did you call it, Yasser? Uh, the a pawn express. A pawn express. <laughs> Unstoppable. Right? I mean, uh, we think of the train, the a train, and a4, a5, a6, and there you go. A f4 on the board. The play is kind of picked up a little bit. Uh, it tells me some time troubles. Or? Not really. They both have around 15 minutes, but I think uh, Nijat's out of moves. So right. That's why he's making the only moves he can find. Exactly. It's very easy for White to play. You just just push. <laughs> just push. Fact, even Knight F3 here looks good, just to just stop everything on this side, and then. I I like those uh, pausing quiet mm -hmm. moves just to take away the counterplay of the opponent. But I must say, A5 also, uh, you know. Full confession, that goes so fast. You can go back with the bishop, you still have the knight f3, no problem, mm -hmm. and you're, you're ready to go bishop e4, a6, a6, yeah. Usually two bishops in the open position are so strong, but here... Especially with the connected mm -hmm. pass pawns right. too, right? They're just not... I, it's because the pawns aren't threatening, aren't menacing. Uh, the king on g8 and the rook on... Uh, pinning the rook, mm -hmm. pinning the knight. Um, yeah. How bad is it, uh, numerically speaking, Nero? Uh, uh, almost plus five. This particular position wow. after, after e4, e5, which is the strongest move yeah. for Hikaru. Knight f3 is good. Bishop f5. Honestly, bishop f5 is something that I find very, very attractive. attractive. You and know, just to avoid else? any possible like blunders or something. Right, and guess who else finds it very, very attractive? Bishop f5, f3 check, last last uh, saloon. King f1 was played. Uh, trick. By the way, did you see knight f3? You know how cruel chess can be. <laughs> knight f3, bishop takes, bishop knight takes. Ah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How cruel chess could be. F3, he, king, he F1 quit on the board. Chess after that. Right? At least for like six <laughs> months. That was it. Bishop takes, knight takes on the board. We've Bishop caught up G5. with. Bishop G5. Yeah, they are blitzing as if they have 30 seconds on the clock, but they both have more than around 15 minutes. Exactly. Um, now after A5. So can C pawn be pushed? Yes. C3? A5, C. Well, let's do it. A5, C3. We can let's just do go it. Rook C8, right? I will... Oh, you're letting c2 happen. a6, yes, c2, rook c8, just as you That's said. Mm -hmm. And then the whole point is, yep, you get the queen first, but... That doesn't help you. Yeah, I get uh, at last and, and best, a7. It's a girl. Um, 
Uh, and and Hikaru has won. And it's won. official. Yeah. Woo! After Great day five. for them. <laughs> <laughs> go, go Hikaru. Go Fabi. Very, wow. very much needed. I mean, you know, yesterday I felt like I was going to awake. It was terrible. So uh, it's, but yeah. uh, it, it's, this candidate has been one of those tournaments that has been for the players emotionally ro roller coaster. Only Nepo has gone through unscathed. It's like, I mean, everybody else is suffering in all of these boiling waters, but Nepo somehow, he's, doing, he's done great. You know, yeah. what, what's other unique thing about this particular candidates tournament? We had maybe a two, three games that survived the time control. So after move 40, mm -hmm. all the positions we see are usually decided. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, okay, sometimes it would be a draw that would kind of prolong a little bit, but most of the time, like if the game is won by one of the players, by move 40, it, it's For done, sure. it's yeah. decided, which is not, not very common because mm -hmm. I still remember like previous candidates, there would be a lot of middle game positions after Absolutely. the time control. So Three here, results, yeah. Players playing for like, you know, this fast crisis right after the opening. And mm. uh, let's just pause and jump to Toronto as Anastasia is caught up with a happy <laughs> Hikaru. Hikaru, my congratulations on your victory against Nijat. It seemed like a very complicated game for all results possible. Mm -hmm. And um, show us some critical moments. I'm sure there were yeah, a few. Yeah, I mean, I thought out of the opening I had this really, really nice position once I got this 95-92. Um, and then I started thinking for way too long, somewhere around here. Um, basically somewhere around here I started thinking and I, I couldn't quite figure out what I was doing. I mean, I thought I should have played rookie 2 rook d1, but I was very unsure what was happening. These like. These G5 98 lines, or even 94, I mean, I just, I couldn't really figure it out. And so then I played this B3 move, which I think was relatively okay. Mm -hmm. um, wherever it was, somewhere around here, I guess. Um, B3, A4, yeah. We can move like this if uh, necessary. This one. Okay, if yeah. Uh, this with the, it okay, helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, this is all, I think, better for me. But then, yeah, somehow I let it get very, very unclear. Like, hmm, yeah, 93 here would have been better. I mean, I just couldn't quite figure out what I was doing exactly, and I started drifting somewhere in the middle here, and it got very, very unclear. Like, yeah, somewhere around here? Ah, Bishop up Yes, four, and there was this G5 move, yes. And like, yeah, I don't know if you were, I, if you no, saw it. Of course, it. I saw G5, Queen C6, and then what? Ah, sorry, Queen, yeah, queen C6, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, Queen C6. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe there are B, some... B8 is winning, Wait, Yes, takes? take on Queen H5, or No, 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 no sorry, not what? takes, no, Bishop C7. Bishop C7. Ah, I can sack. The, ah, I can just sack and play positionally here. <laughs> this is funny. Ah, I just play positionally with H two seven. Ah, I just, ah, this is just winning. Wow. Yeah, ah, you okay. mean you, I mean you give up the exchange, but you have this uh, yeah, amazing attack. Yeah, no. I mean, attack. I felt yes. like there should be something, but I spent way too much time here, and then I just like kind of tried to go for the bailout instead. And um, I mean, then I you started somehow before. to put all your pieces back. Yeah, this and was yeah, and this was ridiculous. Of course, I, uh, of course, here. I mean, I oh, wait. What I can play rook bishop h seven. Yes, actually, it's an interesting moment. Yes, Bishop H7 was possible. Yes, yeah, did you case? did you consider no, it? But what, what, I don't, I don't Somehow, computer doesn't thing. like it because at the end it's like Bishop C7, but I don't remember. Wait a second. Ah, but I have Queen B1 check. Ah, yeah, okay. This, like this I didn't even consider. Yes, yeah, 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 yes, yeah. take, ah, take, and ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. This Queen, this Queen B1 at the end. Yeah, I mean, okay. This. But you see the ah. Yeah, I mean, why it's much better because the pawn structure. I mean, I understand why, but okay. I mean, <laughs> you just I was already, didn't I was already, I was already yes. getting low on time. I mean. Point, I knew I had messed it up, and so I was very, very unhappy with myself. So I went rook b1. Yeah, and g5 was an idiotic move, I think. I should have played knight h2 because I completely missed this h5. And now, after h5, I, I suddenly started to think that I might lose the game because I was down like 10 minutes on the clock. I'm in time pressure, and it's a very hard position to play. Um, but then I had this miracle where he played queen e7, which was a huge mistake here. Yeah. I mean, bishop c7, and black's, black's in great shape, but after he allowed bishop b5, suddenly I think it's very hard to play. I mean, of course, like I, I had a feeling here, I probably have many ways to win, but I had like three minutes left on the clock, and wow. I still have to make like three moves. It's very tricky, and so I just went for the simple end game. I mean, I don't know if it's best, but at least over the board, it seemed practically very difficult for Black to play. And I mean, with this dead dead knight on g6, I, I don't really know how Black is supposed to save it. So once I got here, the rest I think was pretty pretty straightforward. But I mean, my technique was horrible. But it's a win. 
yeah, at the end you won the game again. Congratulations! Did it feel for you like a must-win situation today? Well, I mean, out of the opening, I got everything I could have asked for. So, I mean, that's that's nice. But there still are four rounds to go, so I wasn't looking at it like must-win. I mean, I think yesterday was a situation where I made that mistake. Um, not so much must-win, but I tried to create something very messy, and um, you know, I got outplayed in this middle game. So, yeah, today I just wanted to play good chess, get a position. I got everything I wanted, and then I messed it all up because of this uh, stupid time control. But still found a way, so it worked out. Yeah, and the last question, are you following a little bit this shoe drama, and do you have an opinion? No, I mean, I'm not, I'm not following this at all. I mean, I don't know. Otherwise, I said it was time trouble. I mean, the Arbor said it was one hour. I don't know. I mean, I, I am too old for this nonsense. <laughs> Thank you so much, sure. Hikaru. And we're going back to the studio. Thank you, Anastasia. Our congratulations to Hikaru, but also to Fabi, as the standings have been shaken and stirred thanks to the victory by our two American superstars here. They, oops, that's not the uh, So we don't have a complete that, uh, results. Right, graph, as Hikaru but... has jumped mm -hmm. from four and a half points to join uh, Prague and Fabi at five and a half. So we have two players. We have two players leading the tournament with six points, Nepo right. and Gukesh, and then three players following very closely, Caruana, Prague, and Hikaru. And did it again, just on the outside of that bubble. It, mathematically, I don't think his chances are eliminated at 50%, but not looking good. Right. But definitely Fabi and, uh, and Hikaru are just gonna be very, very happy. And uh, let's jump back to Toronto as Anastasia caught up with Fabi. We are here with Fabiano Caruana. Fabi, congratulations on your victory. How does it feel to win a game? <laughs> it feels very good, of course. It was an important win for me to stay in the race, to still be close to the leaders, kind of close. Um, of course, it's uh, still a very long road ahead, uh, but I'm happy that I recovered a bit because I hadn't won a game in like uh, 10 days. I don't know, it's, it's been forever. <laughs> Felt strange, yes. Yeah, I, I beat uh, Nijad in the second round and then since then I, I not only have I not won a game, I even haven't had like a real chance, yeah, like mm -hmm. a better position. It uh, seems today you got the chance. Finally. Yeah, but apparently the game was not too good. I mean, kind of poor play by us. Uh, but yeah, some, I think good play in time trouble. So my, like, probably this moment was very important. I played C5, it was kind of a brave decision because mm -hmm. you see my time, it's like five minutes and he suddenly can uh, take the G2 pawn, like H4, rook E5, and he can suddenly take this G2 pawn. So, you know, mm -hmm. with three minutes, no increments, it's very scary to do this. Absolutely. So I, I, I thought it was a brave decision, which, of course, I, I see the Val says it's good, but... Um, but during the game, you didn't see this, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean. Okay, missed rook D8, but okay, bishop F1 is a very kind of controlled move, so I, I think it's, it's normal. Yeah, we were making a mistake, but uh, luckily, I, I was winning after the time control, and it wasn't too difficult even, because this uh, trade, trade of rooks is, is inevitable, and uh, the bishop end game is easy. Yeah, so can you say that today at least you try to trust your decisions and your moves? Because this the, I got the feeling from yesterday that you were like already was losing the trust, or even on your decisions. Yeah, well, it's it's difficult in this tournament because you always have some doubts in your mind. I, I think everyone is having this. Mm -hmm. That are um, like you don't, the pressure of the of each decision weighs on you. So each decision feels like, um, like a lot of, a lot riding on it. And um, probably it's not good for your chess. But I don't know. It's not difficult. It's difficult to avoid these emotions. Um, so I can't say. Like my play was heavy. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. I mean, around this moment, like H4. Okay, it's it's a possible move. But here I I thought for a very long time. I think, mm -hmm. like. Yeah, Before 15, you played bishop e2, yes. But did you consider this bishop b6 and d5? Of course, I computer did. move, no, no, but... Of course, uh, of course not. If I had seen it, because it's very nice, nice idea, idea that yes. the knights are now... <laughs> both of them are hanging, They're yes. both hanging, which yes, is very yes. a very funny pattern. Um, exactly, yes. It's using the fact that, yeah, my queen is lost, but <laughs> still I can lose it on my own terms. Yeah, I can exactly, lose it. that's important. I, I can lose it how I want to, but I, I didn't see this. And of course, the d5, then he's just left with this miserable pawn structure. I mean, it's e triple pawns, e6, b7, even the kingside pawn structure is bad for him. So if I'd seen it, I think I would, certainly would have played it, um, but uh, I didn't see it at all. Yeah, I mean, but still you won the game. So I do think Alireza was affected a little bit with all this drama which, which happened yesterday. Did you follow it? 
Uh, not too much. I, well, the thing is, I actually knew about it before it happened because I was at the board ah, yes. when when Nijat uh, uh, told the arbiter like someone yes. is uh, someone is making some noise walking, and so I I, I kind of heard about aware. it during the game, yeah, but yes, I, I didn't know that there was a controversy. And okay, Ali Reza said it didn't bother him today. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a minor issue in my my opinion. So. <clears throat> Like the arbiter had to make a choice. You know, so one, either way, one exactly, player will yes. be perhaps a little bit affected, uh, yeah. upset. But mm -hmm. okay, what to do? Um, I, I didn't see it as like a major thing. Yeah, and the last question: like, how do you um, estimate your chances right now? According to the, this round, Vikar won draw between uh, Nepo and Gukesh. I don't know. I, again, I, I don't. I'm not trying not to think about statistics um, because my play has been suffering clearly. So. I think if I play well, I'll get some chances. Maybe it's not enough, maybe it's enough, but if I don't play well, I, I'll get no chances. So um, I just need to focus on my play. The rest is not in my hands. Exactly. Uh, yes. But it's a better situation now than it was <laughs> after I lost to Hikaru. That felt like a really, um, really bad day. But yeah. uh, now, now it feels quite a lot better. Yeah, tomorrow is the rest day. Any plans? <laughs> rest. <laughs> just to rest. rest. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Fabi. All the best of luck for you, and we go back to the studio to you guys. Thank you, uh, Fabi. And indeed, uh, a very, very good day for American chess fans, American chess players, as both Fabi and Hikaru won their game, jumped back into that leaders group. They're tied uh, for third. And uh, Miro, uh, tell us what's happening in the remaining Alexandra versus Lee uh, well, game. Well, honestly, it's not only them, because right. at some point, it looked like with all the you know ups and downs, right. all the games in the ladies' round would finish in a draw. And Goryachkina, especially, she was defending brilliantly, which For would seem to time. be like absolutely lost position. And right. at the very, very end, after a five. No. After a five, and then you can take here on F5 and it's a draw. Right. Admittedly, once again, it's a computer thing, but you can go King B3 and you do, don't do anything wrong just yet. It's still a draw. Wow. But Knight takes E5 uh -oh. loses. 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 End of story. Because. End of story because of the only move, King F4, which is played. Which is played, yeah, it's right. on the board. King F4 and then if the knight goes here, it's the king which takes. Okay. And then after knight b4, you are not stopping the f4 pawn. Oh. That's uh, something to remember. remember. Right, so knight, two squares, two squares the... and the king. It's the most annoying, right? I mean, the second most annoying would be the king on, the king on g2. The diagonal. Uh, right. Difference. Yep. Simply can't stop. If you cannot stop the pawn like this, that means you can't take B4. Right. And if you can't take B4, I don't know, you go to F2 or something. Yeah, black very carefully wins the knight for this pawn, and these two pawns win them the game. That's a terrible, Whoa. terrible mistake. Whoa, that's just huge, Nasi. And she fought so valiantly. I think maybe time also had some. Oh, right, they were both on a very, yeah. very short. <laughs> And, and, and you were saying that for Vashali too, she was in a terrible oh, wow. position. She was <laughs> yeah. losing, losing, if losing. If you check this one, if you check this one, I'm still not sure if this one will finish in a draw. By the way. But yeah, so it is equal. Okay. And then four moves again. Before? Rookie, eight, it's Vaishali against, it's Salimov Salim against Vaishali, right? So, right. And to give a bit of context, Vaishali started well, but she lost last four of in a her row. games. Four in a row, Ouch. which is like terrible. Painful. So again, this one is equal right now, according okay. to the machine. Uh, over here, rookie eight, white just wins. It's four moves ago. And it looks like the most natural move in the position. Right, well. over here, white was winning no matter how, but she Rook played e5, allowing knight c5 after which. Like, so it's been up and down, back and forth. Crazy. By the way, by the way, in this position, king f6, the move that Salimo has played, is the only way to keep it for white. 
So that means if this game goes on, we don't know. <laughs> it's not playing on three results. Right. And then, you know what? We can kind of make fun of players and so on no, and so on. No, but no, this no, is no. what happens towards the end of the tournament. Exactly. Everyone is somewhat tired. Yes. Everyone is, you know, getting kind of more excited and more exhausted at the same yes. time. Because in a way, Sort of the same was happening today in the open. Like yes. a boss of Hikaru, Hikaru was close to winning. Hot potato. Got and into the trouble and then yeah. won nonetheless. Yep. And yeah. let's not forget the time trouble as well. It's not, and again, the tension of the, you're playing for this, the crowning uh, achievement in your chess career. You 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 want to become the world chess champion. You want to become the challenger. So Whoa. the tension that goes with these games is, is terrible. And this one, this is one it finished. Is this is the Alexandra. Yeah, it's Goryachkina against Liechtenstein, yeah. right? And uh, you were about to say the two. Yeah, a the, four knight a six. So, so you you were saying the, the the knight and the king, the two squares, or the diagonal. Absolutely. Way. Knight so C5, after this check, king e3. Oh, just to, just to see. Well, regrettably, king d4 wins as well, because ah. I wanted king e3 to be, to the, be the, only, the, only move. the only move. But yeah, king, king d4 also wins. King the, e3. The knight's right. not getting back king to the King e3 and the knight can't really, can't really stop the pawn. Wow. Is this Goryachkina's first loss in the tournament? I believe so. She was undefeated. E was she? Yeah. Yeah. I Oof. think so. I think Oof. so. She rarely loses. <laughs> and when I think about the win women standings, by the way, for Lee and for Alexandra, this was a huge, huge uh, result for them as yeah. it, that impacts. Does that mean that Lee, by the way, will join? She's joining Tan Zhong Gi. This game is officially over. Tan Zhong Gi and Humpy Canero made the draw. draw. So that means not only Lee is joining Tan, but also Goretzkin is falling off. So it right. would seem that Tan and Lie would be leading and the third place would be one full point back. Uh, let's uh, see the standings. Yeah, let's sort it out. <laughs> let's sort it out ourselves. Here we have it at the very top. Right, Tan Zhongi joins, oh, sorry, Lei Tingzhi joins Tan Zhongi in the lead with six and a half. And uh, like Mira said, Karyachkina falls behind, and now Katerina Lachno and Karyachkina are sharing third place, but they're full point behind the leaders. Exactly, and because uh, Canero, unfortunately for her, she had an advan advantageous rook ending, it wasn't enough to derail Tan, and she, uh, Canero, is two points behind the leader. and. Uh, and uh, let's jump to Toronto as Anastasia is with Lee. Over to you, Anastasia. We are here with uh, Lee Tingji, who just won the game against Alexander Goreshkin, one of, one of the players who is trying to win this tournament, definitely. Um, how did it feel winning this very important game? This game was very complicated and uh, I just didn't give up at the end and uh, she made a mistake and I just won. Yeah, I mean, this moment when you ended up in, in the ending, exchanging the queens, uh, bishop against knight, how did you estimate it? Uh, I evaluated the position should be winning for me, but uh, after the t first time control and I also had uh, time, but uh, Actually, I spend uh, almost all my time to think about this position. Actually, it's very hard because uh, I think I saw a lot of variation, but uh, just couldn't find the, I think, the correct way. Mm -hmm. So she played this move e4, yes, I think the, the, the critical move, and you, you took one time and then you played bishop c8. Okay, I don't know yeah. if you consider to take on e4 at this moment. Yeah, and take and the take and the f5. But, uh, but again, it was not so clear. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you decided to go for bishop uh, c8. And uh, so what was your estimation here? Uh, generally, I think uh, it's George position. Also, uh, I was in time trouble, but I, I think I only have like a three, four minutes on the clock. But I think uh, the position should be fine for me. At least I can make a draw any time. Yeah. And, uh, so she has to find the moves, right, to, to hold? Yeah, but uh, maybe she thought it's like uh, okay to play. Uh, and uh, so 
so uh, let's just check the ending because we didn't see how it mm -hmm. finished. Maybe you can show us uh, the moment, the critical moment. And uh, somewhere here, like, it seemed like it should be drawish, right? Yeah, King A2, F5. Ah, so and uh, uh, when I play F5, I, s I thought uh, it's already like completed draw. And uh, when she play knight e5, and then I realize I can play knight king f4, and the two like limited the, the nice square, and mm -hmm. I, I was like so shocked also because at this point, and the black can in this game is crazy. Yeah, wow, what a victory! Now you became again the co leader of the tournament. I think you jumped uh, to the first place, right? Together with Tan Jungi. What do you think about it? Tense event? Mm, very happy to have a rest day tomorrow, <laughs> so don't think about the result too much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, and uh, we will let you go and rest, uh, and we're going back to the studio to the guys. Thank you, Anastasia. Our congratulations, of course, for Lee and uh, Miro. I mean, a very, very happy day for American chess fans. Uh, what can I say? Final <laughs> thoughts about an incredible Round, round 10. Well, right, because uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm tempted to kind of sum up the tournament, sum up the tournament. It feels like ages, right? 10 right. rounds is such a lot. Yeah, let's stick to round 10. Uh, well, I think for both it was very, kind of very hard fought games mm -hmm. and both players, Fabiano and Hikaru, should be very happy at the very end. Because, Absolutely. Because yeah, like, got kind of chances, then spoiled the chances, then gotten back. And yeah, maybe it was a bit of luck, but that's what one needs in, you know, in such a long tournament. So no, I think sure. once again, as we've heard from Lei in the interview, it's, yeah. it's a good thing that tomorrow's a, tomorrow's a free day, <laughs> right. you know, to reflect a little and to exactly. prepare, I think mentally prepare, first of all, to, for the finish. Wonderful, thank you, Mira. And Anastasia, you get the final word of the day for a round 10. Over to you in Toronto. Thank you, guys. It was such a great day for all of us, for American chess, of course, for American chess fans. Both Fabiano and Hikaru won their games, and it, they, when they came to the press center, you could finally see happy Fabiano. It was heartbreaking to see him yesterday uh, not winning this position, and today, finally, he managed to win, as he said, uh, the first game in 10 days. Never happened to him before. So, of course, we're looking forward, and we're hoping that uh, both American players will still keep fighting for the spot um, in the World Championship match. Back to you. Thank you, Anastasia. The candidates 2024 suddenly got a lot more interesting <laughs> for American chess fans. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Do tell your friends where you've been hanging out. Tomorrow is a rest day. Enjoy it as best you can. And we're going to have four fabulous, absolutely outstanding candidate rounds uh, coming up this week. See you on... Mm -hmm. See you in two days. <laughs> That's in two days. <laughs> Wednesday. There. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.